like being like, <laughs> well, I'm like an hour in sleep. So. Yeah, something quite massive, but I want you guys make sure that you, uh, you mute when you're not addressing us and try to put everything in the chat. Also, one thing that we'd like to ask when we get started is that you uh, keep your questions to the subject at hand, because sometimes when we're talking about financial aid, then another question will come in and then we might miss that. We don't want to do that. So um, try to keep your questions to the uh, subject at hand and then we will get to the other questions that you may have uh, a little bit later as the uh, session progresses. So again, we just don't want to miss anything. We want you to stay focused on on the topic at hand so that way you don't miss anything either. All right, are we ready? Okay, welcome Eagles, congratulations, yes, you made it. Welcome to our new student orientation. We are so happy to have you here. Uh, we are super excited, we're eager, we're just super, super looking forward to have you, whether it be on campus or online. I know we have a lot of people here that are not necessarily physically in Texas, but that's okay. We are still here for you. Uh, my name is Mariceli Santiago. I am the Director of Student Life and Activities, and I will be your host today. Yes, my job today is to make sure that you have a fabulous time, that you have a great experience, that you understand what's necessary for you uh, as a CTC student to be successful. Yes, we want you to be successful, and it starts right now. Um, you, most of you probably have classes starting next week, which means that you are about to be ready to roll. We're really excited um, to make sure that you're doing what you need to. We're here. We want to see you come on campus if you're here. And if not, we want you checking in, letting us know what's going on with you, um, making sure that we know that you are uh, being uh, proactive in your classes. And if you have questions, that that's what we're here for you. So everybody ready? Can I go? Yes, yes. Let me get some nods. Yes, yes. I see y'all. All right. Well, I am going to share my agenda with you guys so that you guys have an idea as to what to expect today um we're super jam-packed it's a it's a very packed morning but it's okay that's why we're here we want to make sure that you're successful and that means that we are going to show you what's going on okay everybody see it yes 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 okay good so this morning, uh, we're going to have a few, some things. Uh, we're going to have a welcome real quick, and then we're going to start talking to you about SOAR, which is a brand new program that has started recently. Uh, we're going to talk about Eagle Mail, uh, Blackboard, uh, faculty panel. You're going to get to meet faculty uh, and be able to ask some questions with regards to how to be able to be successful in the classroom and some of the things of faculty want you to know so that you can be successful. Uh, we're going to have somebody talk about financial aid and uh, together with financial aid, we are going to have a VA representative. So if you have questions, that's when you can ask about financial aid and VA. Then we're going to have the academic advising uh, here. Um, they're going to talk about degree plans, how you get your degree plans, if you need to make any changes, registration for classes, and how Eagle Self Serve works. Uh, campus police is going to talk to you about safety, whether you're here on campus or not. We always want to make sure that you're safe. And so they're going to talk about safety and some of the things that you need to be aware of. And then we're going to have some, uh, we're going to talk about conduct and resources that are available to you as a student. And then we'll be having the Q and a, any extra questions that you have, we'll be here to be able to, uh, answer them. So this is what we have to store for you today. That's the plan, guys. But before we continue, we have to have our fearsome leaders uh, be able to say hi to you. And that means that we have Dr. Robin Garrett. She is our uh, deputy chancellor that oversees all of us in making sure that you are successful. So she oversees student success persistence, which is what I fall under. She's my boss's boss, but she really is all about making sure that you guys are being successful and making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to to make it happen. So big round of applause, at least virtually, for Dr. Robin Garrett. Yay! 
<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Oh my goodness, thank you for that that warm warm uh, introduction, Marcelli. Um, I don't have to make sure they do anything. They are so totally committed to you and what what they know they need to do to to help you guys be successful that they make my job very easy. So um, on behalf of the executive team, I want to welcome all of you to Central Texas College and also applaud you and congratulate you for the commitment that you have made to your future. The next few years of dedicated study um, will bring you much, much joy um, from the work that you do, as well as knowledge that you are gonna be bettering yourselves and your families moving forward, whether you're going straight into a job or you're transferring, whatever it is, congratulations for making this decision to come to college and come to Central Texas College. We're here for you. We have the best team of faculty and staff you will ever, ever, ever run into and um, they are here for you. So thank you all. And I don't want to keep you because you've got a jam packed morning. So enjoy and take lots of notes. And I think this is you can go back and review this. And I think we even have some students on here that are coming back for um, another new student orientation, even though they've been here. So come back again next time. <laughs> all right. Y'all take care. Bye bye. All right. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Thank you for always uh, supporting us and helping us. Um, and as part of student success and making sure that we're successful, uh, our next presenter or next person is going to say hi is Dean Julie Starkey. She is the dean that oversees student success and persistence. Hey guys, um, welcome. I'm so glad you are. You've made the choice to participate in our new student orientation program. I have to tell you, this is the first step towards your success because you're going to get very important information today. Uh, that's going to make the process make sense to you. So you're giving yourself a leg up um, in making sure you understand how everything works. Um, I wouldn't do, be doing my job, though, if I didn't give you some tips for success. So I'm going to make this really quick and easy, but I'm telling you these are very simple. But if you would, you know, build them into your day, I promise um, you're going to see a great end result. Number one, pretty obvious, and you're going to hear this from your faculty, you need to go to class every single day. You don't need to be booking appointments or doing something else. If you're in an online class, you need to check in with that online class very regularly. Um, it's not something where you disappear for a week that you can't do and be successful, but the faculty are gonna explain all of that to you and why it's important. But I'm telling you, you've got to engage in all of your classes all the time. Uh, second, you're gonna meet a couple of faculty here today. Guys, they are your number one resource. You've got to get to know the faculty who are working in your classes, who are instructing you. Um, they are your number one advocate. You've got to get to know them. I don't care if you're in a face to face class. A virtual, um, whatever it is, um, you got to take the time and get to know them because they're going to take the time to get to know you. So ask them the questions. Um, Number three, I want you to start. You're going to learn a lot today about resources. You're going to learn about a lot that CTC has to offer for you to be successful. You need to take advantage of all of those resources day one. It's fine if you need to wait three, four weeks, but really and truly first day of classes, which is start taking advantage of them today. But first day of classes for the summer is Monday. Start using you know, log on to the library website and understand there what all the services that they have to offer to you. Get involved if you need tutoring. Go ahead, sign up for it. We're going to explain all of that to you. Um, disability support services, if you need that, get it done. Use these resources because that's what they're here for. Uh, and then the other thing I'm going to tell you is I need you to ask questions today. Don't be afraid to speak up. Put it in the chat. Um, let us let us answer those questions for you. I don't want you to leave here today and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't ask that question. I promise you it's not a dumb question. We want to answer it. I know Bruce asked you to try to keep it within you know, where, where we are. Yes, that's going to make our day go smoother. So please try to do that. Um, but at the end, we have a whole Q&A and we're going to go back over any information that was confusing or you need to spend more time with us on something. We're going to go back over all of that. Today is all about you and your success. So, you know, please ask us whatever you need to ask us. And then the other thing that I'm going to ask that you do is jot down some of our names and our contact information. We're going to be putting it in the chat. 
this is your personal connection at CTC. When you hit a roadblock or a problem and you need someone to help you get something resolved, these are some people who can reach out to you. So I'm going to put my contact information in the chat. I know Maricelli will and several of, of us will throughout today. Write that information down and reach out to us if we can help you. Guys, I'm so glad you're here. Have a great day. Um, and like I said, I'm glad I'm glad you're an eagle with us. Okay. Thank you, Dean Starkey. All right, guys. It's time to get to some of the fun stuff. And uh, first up, I want um, to see if Ms. Charlotte Wesley, she will talk to you guys about the SOAR program, what that means, and what that means to you. Hi, good morning, New Eagles. I am Charlotte Wesley, and I am the Advising and Success Coordinator. So I want to talk to you about our new SOAR program. So SOAR um, stands for Student Outreach and Academic Relationships. So I said relationships. So now that you are a new CTC Eagle, you are now a part of SOAR. And we want to develop a relationship with you. You don't have to go through this journey alone. And so this is part of the reason why uh, this program was started so that we can assist you, our first time students in getting through your first year and getting to your next semester. So it's all about uh, continuing your academic journey and helping you find what it is you want to do and assisting you with that. So, um, as a part of SOAR, we have several events that we try to plan throughout the year and be on the lookout for uh, something that's called a SOAR social. So during these socials, we try to, um, we, we do, we bring in different departments that are going to be instrumental in helping you get through your academic journey. So some of the departments that we use in the SOAR program, um, financial aid, advising, vet success, student life with Maricelli. Uh, we have disability support services and career services. So just hearing these different departments, these are all areas that will be able to help you along your journey. When you have questions about your classes, if you have questions about what class do I need to register for for the next semester? Uh, do I even want to continue in this degree plan? We're here to guide you through. And also a part of SOAR, we have what's called a, um, a SOAR grant. So with this grant, you won't qualify for the grant during your first semester, but after your uh, first semester, you'll be able to apply for this uh, grant. And it's a monetary stipend to assist you with um, paying for your classes, for your books, or anything that you may need for um, while you're here attending CTC. Okay, so we have two uh, people, myself and Morgan Powell, that are over the SOAR program. So if you have questions about anything throughout this semester or anything along your academic journey, we're here to support you. All right, thanks. And can high school students qualify for that? High school students, no. They have to be current CTC students. I mean, dual credit, I think, is what they mean. Correct. So the, dual it, it, the, the scholarship, you have to have graduated from high school, but as soon as you graduate from high school, you do qualify for the SOAR the, the score grant. So if you're starting classes this summer, um, that would be your starting semester. So all of you should apply for that SOAR grant. Um, it's through eForms, and we're going to show you where all that is as we go through today. You can go ahead and put the application in for the fall semester. Absolutely. And I would encourage every single person who is logged into this call to go ahead and do that because that's $500 for you. Again, um, if you are going to be in high school, you don't, you, you can't, you, you don't qualify for the funds unless maybe you're, you're graduating this summer and then you do qualify. Great. Thank you very much guys. Um, so now I'm going to ask Dr. Angela Reese. Yes. 
uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna be like cheering her on too. Uh, she is a uh, one of the professors from the business department, and one of the things that she's going the main thing she's gonna talk to you about right now is Blackboard and what Blackboard really is. So please take it away. Thank you, Marcelli. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good morning Eagles. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I am so excited. I can't believe how many people are on this call. I was just kind of flipping through and I mean it's page after page. So thank you for making a great first step towards your uh, future successes. So with that, I won't take too much time because everybody's going to be thanking you all day today. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. And as Maricelli mentioned, I'm going to be going over Blackboard. So if you're like, well, what the heck is Blackboard? Blackboard is actually our virtual classroom. And um, whether you are taking a lecture course, an online course, if you are taking a blended course, um, any course that you were taking with us, most likely maybe just a handful, like maybe the AC repair and maybe welding aren't going to have access um, to Blackboard, but pretty much every other course that we have here at Central Texas College is going to have some form of connection to Blackboard, our virtual classroom. This is so important that um, you understand just the basics for this. And if you're already thinking, oh gosh, I need to get my notes out. I'm going to try to get my computer out or another screen and do exactly what she's doing, don't. Just wait, just um, everything um, that you are seeing, and um, we actually have a recording of that I'm going to share a link with you that is going to go into much more detail than what I'm doing today. Today is just a quick little introduction. I have a 45 minute video that we recorded about a year ago that I'm going to link um, here in a few minutes. Actually, that's what you were seeing when my screen first showed up because I wanted to make sure to have it ready, but it is about 45 minutes and it's gonna go through everything I'm doing today plus more. So just kind of let this be just truly that intro into it, just kind of sit back and relax and just start to get a feel for what it is. So again, this is our virtual classroom. There are many ways to get there. I'm just going to show you the way that I like to uh, show students just quick and easy. If you go to our homepage, which is ctcd.edu you and you scroll down all the way to the bottom you are going to see a bunch of quick links a bunch of resources and you will see down here at the bottom um, under quick links you will see blackboard so once you go here the first time and click on that um, it will bring you to ctc.blackboard.com um, this is actually a separate website that you can save so if something happens and the website is down momentarily something they're updating something you can save this page to your browser and you can go directly directly to Blackboard. So again, um, if anything you want to write down, it's this ctc.blackboard.com. Once you are here now, um, I know some of you are probably, even though I told you just to sit back and relax, are probably trying to do this with me. So um, depending on um, when you registered and when your first course starts will depend upon um, whether or not, you, actually, let's see, it's Thursday, so you probably can't access until this afternoon. So you get access to your classes uh, three days prior to the course starting, which would technically make that Friday, but every once in a while, people tell me they can get in on a Thursday. So just kind of FYI. So those of you who are brand new aren't going to have access just yet. So username and password, um, your username is going to be your student ID number, which is that a number that starts with a lowercase c and then is seven or eight digits long. And then your password is going to be your birthday, month, month, day, day, year, year. So let's just say you're thinking, well, I don't even know what my student ID is. I can't remember. So down here underneath login, you're going to see username lookup. That is how you can go in and look up your specific username and get your student ID. Again, lowercase c and then your, um, your number and then password is month, month, day, day, year, year. Once you actually log in, it's going to bring you to a screen that looks similar to this. Mine is a faculty view, so mine is going to look just a little bit different. So obviously I have faculty resources. Yours is going to have um, student resources so that you can have access to tutoring and access to um, uh, various departments across campus. What I want you to focus on um, when you first get access to your courses in a Blackboard is my courses. So you can see here, I have a list of every course that I have going right now, and then all of the courses that I have to come in the future through the end of the year. Again, mine looks different. So once you are um, able to see your classes, so here's one that is going to start on Monday. So this is business principles. 
Um, this is a course anyone can take and um, actually is part of the course. So if this looks fun to you, go ahead and sign up for it. So um, a few things that I want to show you is that when you first enter to Blackboard, most instructors have it come to the announcements. Some have it go to a different area. Um, but once you are in, you are going to see it look fairly similar with uh, things that are custom to instructors. On the left hand side of the screen at the top where you see start here, biosig, announcements, messages, info, that's fairly standard for all of your instructors. I'm going to go over a few of those pages. Um, underneath that, syllabus page one and page two, your roadmap, your Bible, your hand holding guide through the course. Underneath that is going to vary, uh, again, depending on department, what is there, but we're either going to have like lessons or units or weekly assignments, something like that, and then any other special links that your instructors want you to see. As you scroll a little bit further down, one thing that I want to draw your attention to, and I will come back to, is my grades. Um, this is how you can double check yourself along your journey. So just a few, I want to go over announcements. Some instructors are going to post weekly and maybe daily or every few day announcements. I'm one of those instructors who loves to post announcements of what's going on. Um, some instructors prefer to do that via messages in class or another route. Um, once you get in there, though, you'll be able to see how your instructors want to communicate with you. So let's go through a few of these things. On the left hand side, start here. I'm not going to go through this page. I'm just going to tell you to make sure to come back to it. So make sure that you go through this one time um, so that you can see all of the resources that you have, various instructions, um, how to communicate, uh, scholastic honesty, which is very important because you want to make sure that um, you're not doing anything that is plagiarizing, um, disability support, and so much more. So make sure to check that out your first time in Blackboard. After that, it's the same in every course. Biosig, I'm going to come back to at the end. Announcements, I have already talked about. Messages, um, this is how you can get a hold of your instructor. You will also be able to email your instructor this way. I'm not going to show you what this looks like because it would show you all of the students in my course. But if I clicked on create message, it will then show me everybody that is in um, my course right now. So again, I'm not going to do that, but this is how you could communicate with your instructor. To the right of your instructor's name in parentheses, it's going to say SME for subject matter expert. That's how you know that that is your instructor for the course. Below that, we have our instructor info. So you can see here, um, I've got a kind of an older picture, um, how to locate me, how to contact me, all of those great things, who my supervisor is, should you need it. Again, that is going to be unique to your instructor. Now, as I told you, your roadmap, your Bible, your guide, your everything you need to go for uh, any course is your syllabus. Read it. Please make sure to read the syllabus. Um, on syllabus page one is where you're going to learn about your, um, just a second, I'm sorry, somebody's asking me to annotate. Let's, okay. Um, so this is where you're going to, um, again, uh, learn more about your course, the learning outcomes, what type of book, instructional materials that you're going to need. So for my course that I'm showing you, this is a free textbook. Some of us do have free textbooks in a variety of our courses. We'll come back to textbook information when we get to the Q&A panel. Um, as we scroll further down, information on our extension policy and then, of course, frequently asked questions that are specific to instructors. Now, syllabus page two is where I really, really, really want you to pay attention. This is how you know if you are on track or not. Somebody asked about how do I know how long my class is? Um, I saw that question earlier. Um, so when you're signing up in Eagle Self Service, which you will see uh, later on this morning, um, it will show you the start and the end date for your course along with the number of weeks. So during the summer, we have 5, 10, 6, 8, 12, I think, uh, no, just the 10 um, week courses. And in the, and then in the fall, we have a variety of links, 3, 6, um, 10, 12, 16, I believe. Um, other departments um, might have other uh, start and end dates. So make sure that you are looking to see what class you are signing up for. So for example, this one that I'm showing you is only a five week course. It also tells you that it is a self paced course, meaning it has a start date an end date, and then all of the due dates are suggested, but highly encouraged that you follow. You don't want to wait until the last day and then realize, oh man, I don't have enough time to finish this course. So um, please make sure that you're paying attention to that. The other very important thing to pay attention to is that in every course, we have a mandatory participation requirement, whether it is in person or online. If you do not attend 
court, the course with a graded um, assignment, you could be dropped um, for non-participation. So even if you log into Blackboard, that does not tell me that you're active. So for example, in this course, it says, please complete the course procedures quiz under lesson one. Failure to complete this could result in a drop. So you will see this in all of your classes. Um, so make sure that you do that first assignment that is required. If you were having an issue though, and this is something you're gonna hear us say a lot, communicate. So let's just say you can't even get into Blackboard and it's the first day of course, and it's a short course and you're thinking, what do I do? Um, make sure to reach out to your department, reach out to your instructor so that um, you can email, you can call, let people know that you are having a hard time. Below that, this is what I would suggest you print out. This is your suggested in my course schedule of assignment. Again, these due, these due dates are suggested, but highly encouraged. So you can see what you should be doing throughout the course. In a course that is not self-paced, you're going to want to make sure to have all of your assignments turned in um, by this due date. I would not suggest waiting till the end of the day, even do it as soon as you can. Um, and remember we're on central standard time for, um, for our courses. Below that, we have exam information and then how you get your grade. So this shows you the breakdown of what is required in the course and the points connected to it. So far so good, Marcella, you have questions coming in. Good, okay, moving on. So the next thing that I wanna show you, again, everything on the left-hand side over here is going to be specific to the instructor, but most of us are either gonna have something that's called lessons, weekly assignments, or units, something along those lines to show you um, where you're supposed to be. Can y'all hear me okay? I'm getting some really weird feedback. Yes, Is somebody hear you to okay. Talk? Somebody probably just needs to mute, but uh I got him. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I told you I was going to come back and don't worry, I'm almost finished. Um, I don't don't feel overwhelmed. We're almost there. So uh, this lessons verification. So BioSig, as I told you, I was going to come back to. So let me go ahead and click on BioSig enrollment up here at the top under start here. When you take your first course with the college, you're going to have to create a BioSig ID, uh, a biometric signature ID. I'm not going to go through the steps with you. This is something that you can read over and that you can watch. But basically, you're going to have to come up with a passcode that is four digits. And when um, the when you first create it, it will stay with you from now until the end of time with CTC. So I was one of the first people that started with BioSig at the college over 10 years ago, and my ID has never changed. In every course I have, it is exactly the same. I've never even had to reset mine, and I say that and then watch today's the day that it's not going to work. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it works. So once you create it, then it's going to ask you to verify you are who you say you are. And in your classes, you're going to be asked to do this. Um, it could be to verify your lessons, to verify an exam. You can use the same password I'm using um, because it's how we are um, uniquely creating that and how we are uniquely identifying ourselves. So um, you see that I passed, I did well. So now that I have verified I am who I say I am, everything's released that I need for my lessons. So again, some instructors might have this connected to your discussion board or to your exam where you'll have to identify you are who you say you are. Again, now you have um, the lessons. I'll showing. I'll just show you briefly one. So when you're ready to get started, go to lesson one, and then you can go through, take the course procedures quiz, and then go through the entire lesson. Um, again, um, each lesson will show you where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, what assignments that you have for the course. Last thing I want to show you, my grades. So now you're thinking, okay, how do I know how I'm doing? I don't even, you know, what if I, did I submit something? Did I not? So if you click on my grades on the left-hand side, you will see so in my course, since it's self-paced, everything is showing. Um, in some courses, it might not all show up because instructors might have it hidden. But since mine is basically, here's the course, um, stay on track, uh, you will see that you have everything here. These dashes mean I haven't completed it yet. So let's just say I started it, but I didn't finish. So for example, this discussion board right here, it requires four total posts. So if I only do one post, even though four are required, it's gonna give me a blue circle with um, an exclamation point inside of it. 
no, just a blue circle, I'm sorry. So that blue circle is telling me I'm not finished yet. So I need to figure out why I'm not finished. So go back and look at the instructions. Oh, I see I have to reply to three peers. So then I will reply to my peers. Now that blue circle is going to turn into an, a white exclamation point inside of a yellow circle. That tells you it's complete. It's now ready for grading. So you don't have to say, hey, Dr. Reese, did I turn in my assignment? You can go and see that it is turned in. So that, that tells you I need to grade it. Once I grade it, it's going to turn to a number. Hopefully it's a 75 out of 75. Underneath it, you might see a blue conversation bubble that you can click on for feedback from your instructor, along with a little rubric that you can see of the breakdown. Um, so with that, I am going to um, wrap things up and just let you know that if you're thinking, well, she didn't even tell me how to create a discussion board. She didn't show me how to do the bio sig that long. She didn't show me all of these different things, how to get to my exams. So that is where I'm going to link the CTC live into the chat session so that if you need those details, if you want to follow along, again, it's 40 minutes. Um, you can check that out. And um, if you have any questions so far, please let us know. If you don't have any questions now, uh, but you do as you get started in your course, please make sure you can, you can email me, you can reach out to me, anybody on this call, um, and definitely keep your instructor informed as well of any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Dr. Reese. Yes, ma'am. Um, but don't go anywhere because now we have the faculty panel and Dr. Reese is definitely part of that. Um, also, I saw Dr. Seeley, Cruz Seeley. Um, she is also here. She is the department chair. Well, I'm going to. OK, so just so that you know, just these two individuals represent a whole lot of. Um, these departments are big and they, they represent a lot of people. So I'm going to let them tell you what, who, what degree plans are overseen in their department. Um, and then let me see is. I don't where's Kerwin? I don't see Kerwin, but that's OK. Um, they can answer basically everything else. So please take it away, ladies. Maybe Dr. Uh, Cruz Silly, can you maybe introduce yourself and then we'll go back to Dr. Reese. Sure. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Cruz Seeley. I am the mathematics department chair and in my department is mathematics, engineering, drafting and design and robotics. So if you're interested in any of those, you can come see me and I will give you all the info that you need. Um, I'm located in the planetarium, second floor. This is just a virtual background. I wish it looked like this, but, but I'm in the planetarium right now upstairs. Um, so y'all can definitely come see me or give me a call. I put my number in the chat. Um, is that all we're doing is just introducing ourselves? Yeah. Well, why don't you tell everybody what's your main tip um, mm -hmm. to be successful in your classes? Okay, uh, sure. So the, the my main tip, I think, because I think a lot of instructors are going to touch on things that I think are important as well, but I think my number one main thing is time management. It 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 really is like the biggest thing to me. I can help you get through the math. I can help you get through that. But if you don't go home and practice or you don't go home and do your work, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you sat in class and took all the notes. So you need to make sure that you're managing your time and getting the work done. I don't know how people get through their day without like their planner like it's literally next to me every single day because i can't i have to plan out my day i have to like take a big project and break it into chunks and really get it down um so i i'm gonna show just really quick myself if you will just allow me to do so um just a, like a really quick time management little thing i put together um so just let me know when you can see my screen maybe Not yet. You know, you know, it's a big deal for a faculty member that they do time management when out of nowhere, they come up with this whole <laughs> presentation on how important it is to them. It she is came prepared. Okay. It is, it is Guys, really this is how it is. She came prepared for this. I did not know this was going to happen and that's okay. Go ahead. And whenever you're ready, um, okay. I don't see it yet. Share. Screen. And share. just in case while she's trying, there it is. It's starting to share now. Okay. Yes. So this is my time time management. 
the strategy is to get the most from a class, okay? At the very beginning of the class, you need to be watching the videos. You need to be going to class every day. Or if you're in an online class, checking in every day, reading the assigned chapters, working through examples, learning that terminology. Then in the middle of the week, we have tutoring options. You can go to the academic studio. You can sign up for online tutoring. You can go visit your professor. It kills me, like in my heart, literally, when students tell me I didn't want to bother you. You didn't want to bother me. You're not bothering me. This is my job. You're supposed to be here with me. You're supposed to be in my office. I'm sitting here eating chocolate. Come <laughs> stop me. Okay. I really want you to come stop me so that you're sit. You're not a bother. Okay. This is what we're supposed to do. I'm here to help you succeed at the end of the week. You guys, you should be done with that week's components. You should be reviewing your notes and studying and then looking forward to how you're going to plan the next week. How do you do that? Well, a planner is like the best thing I can say, but to, like, put it to even, even if it's digital. Hey, on Monday, Dr. Chrissy Lee, I work six to six and then I have to cook dinner. I get it. You have to feed your kids. It's frowned upon if you don't. Okay. So you have to feed them. Like I totally get it. And then you can say, okay, I can give you an hour of my time. I'll take it. I'll take that hour. Do some studying, do some homework, plan out your week. The next day, oh, I take the kids to school. I work 10 to 10. That's it. I can't give you any of my time. Okay. Got it. Wednesday, I'm off. Oh, Wednesday, you're off. Oh. The majority of that day should be mine, okay? Or or your other professors, but mostly mine, okay? <laughs> so you want to make sure make sure that you're doing that work. I get it that you have that you want to take a break and have a lot of students ask me, when do I get me time? Uh, is Dr. Garrett still on this line? <laughs> okay, when do I get me time? When you graduate. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Okay. So you have to get some me time. You have to take a break because how many of y'all have ever studied, studied, studied? All you did was study and then take an exam and then you totally bomb it, right? Me, just me. Okay. That's okay. It happens, right? But it's because you've immersed yourself too much. You have to take a step back and look back with a fresh pair of eyes. Okay. So my tips for success is read your weekly announcements, go to class and get that those announcements and see what you're supposed to be doing for that week. It's a great start. Check your email, your messages frequently. That's how we communicate with you. I don't know who sunshine1234 at yahoo.com is. I'm not going to use that email. So I'm going to email your student email and they'll teach you how to forward it to your email that you check most often um, or check messages and Blackboard. That's what we, we um, use frequently. And then reach out to your instructor. If you have any questions or concerns, at any point during the course, we are your first go to. Okay. We're your number one resource. Because if we don't know the answer, we'll find out for you. Okay. So we don't want you to feel alone. Whether you're taking an online class or face to face, you should not feel like you're doing this by yourself. We're here. Okay. And so we wanted to show you this is why I love the fact that Monticelli does these, is because. I want you to see us. We're real people. We're here. We're tracking your progress. We want you to succeed. We want you to pass. It makes us look good. Okay. So make sure that you're coming to class and doing what you need to do. Okay. That's my show. Well, I don't know if you realize how much he wants you to communicate, you know, like actually plan your, your week. Um, but yes, uh, uh, for the high school students, can the, can they schedule a meeting in line if needed? Um, we have a lot definitely of people yes. that are not in Texas or not near our central campus. And yes, if they yes, want to yes. talk to you, can they do it online? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have Zoom, we have WebEx. I okay. have talked to people in Hawaii. Yep. The time zones were crazy, but we still make it work. So anytime you want to just kind of reach out, say, hey, can I get 30 minutes of your time? We can jump on. Technology gives us no excuse for us not to be able to communicate with you, even if you're online. Okay. Absolutely. Concur. Okay. Yes. Okay. Dr. Reese, you want to <laughs> give your, your highlights? I mean, I know she gave a lot of good ones, but is there other yes. than what she said, is there anything that you want to highlight as something that the students should know? Yes. So, um, our department is business administration, hospitality, homeland security, paralegal, accounting technician, and real estate. I feel like I might've missed one, but you know, you get the gist of it. So all things business and a few things that kind of aren't. So um, anything that you need for that department, please uh, make sure to reach out to us. And in that reaching out, I know I've already said communicate probably three or four times, but I'm going to go ahead and reiterate that. Communicate, communicate, communicate. I can't help you if I don't know there's a problem. So if you can't log in, 
I don't know that. If you don't understand the instructions, I can't help you if I don't hear from you. So we are happy to help you. Um, so as you are planning and adding things to your calendar, make sure to add in there that I need, you know, make notes that you need to communicate and um, ask questions as they arise. Uh, please don't wait till the last minute is the other thing that I want to make sure to explain to you guys. Even though I said it, I really want to harp on it for a second. I can't tell you how many times because I teach pretty much all the self-paced courses. Um, well, mainly self-paced. I don't think I have any right now that aren't. So what happens a lot of the times is I'm seeing students' grades and I'll do like a, here's your current screenshot, here's your average um, for things you haven't turned in. And people are failing and they see that. And then we get to the last week of class and I'm like, this is the last week of class. Don't forget, get started, get it done. If you hit it hard, you can still do it. And then Friday morning, can I get an extension? because I didn't realize class ended today, okay? Or I get, oh, I just started this morning and I don't have enough time to finish all my assignments. Well, that's because you waited till the last day and I get life happens. Um, and if something major is happening, communicate, let me know, I can work with you. If you have a family emergency, if something's going on, reach out to us. Um, but just don't wait till the last minute just because you think you can get it all done in one day, you can't, and you're not getting anything out of it anyway. Um, or, you know, I get messages at 11 o'clock at night. I can't get my bio sig to work and that's 11 o'clock at night and the class ends at midnight. So um, make sure to please um, get started, uh, get that time management, get your schedule, communicate as there are problems. And then the other really important thing I want to make sure to tell you is because I'm seeing a lot of this on evaluations um, are that students say what the instructors talk about in class isn't on the test. One thing that I want to share with you is that it is so important to read the book. So what we talk about in class are some of the highlights, some of the real world connections and applications to the theories, maybe sometimes that you are reading in that book. So make sure to read the book, take your notes, ask your questions. So if an instructor doesn't cover something that maybe didn't make sense to you in the book, bring it up. Ask the question, that's what we're here for. But we have limited time in a lecture course to where we're over, able to go over um, specific items and we try to hit the ones that are, are most important and relevant and that you are gonna need for future application. So communicate, read your book, stay on task. Great, 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 great. Now, let me ask you in terms of communication and normally I do a whole thing on email, but really, really haven't been able to. Um, Eagle Mail is something that we have available to our students. Um, it's the way that we usually communicate with them. However, can you touch upon when they get their Eagle Mail um, and how that kind of works? Sure thing. Um, so Eagle Mail, um, since you're brand new, or I'm assuming most of you are, um, you will not get that until you have been in courses for um, a little bit of time. And the reason I'm using a little bit is because it's based on what we like to call our census date, which is different for every length of course. So um, after we certify, um, so that magical assignment that you have to do to make sure you stay in class, um, as soon as that date passes, about a week after that date, um, like an, on my course, that I showed you, it was June 8th. So about a week after that, um, my students will have access to their emails um, and um, you will get an email to the, the email you have on file right now explaining to you how to use your CTC Eagle Mail account. So once you have access to that, um, make sure to start checking it, make sure to use it. You can also forward that email to another email so you know if something is coming in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um and uh, they can also communicate what like through a blackboard is one of the other main ways that you guys have right and hello we can Sorry about that. Um, I, I mentioned the messages in class. I didn't click on it. It was that link that was over there right above or right next to um, instructor information. Um, and that's how you can reach out to anybody in your course or to your faculty member. Just a reminder in parentheses next to my name, it would say SME for subject matter expert. And that's how you know that's your instructor. Great. And how important is the syllabus? 
It's really important. It's like a, a like a mini contract between me, the instructor, and you as the student. And so I would really make sure that you're reading through it very first day. We go over it in class, but I know if you're online, it's really important to go to as well. And I can tell when people don't read it. <laughs> okay. So when when you come to me and say, "Oh, how much is my test is worth?" It's in the syllabus. What happens if I miss a test? It's in the syllabus. Um, what happens if I need more resources? It's in the syllabus. So all of that is located in the syllabus. I don't mind you coming to ask me, but I'm letting you know that it was all there to begin with, right? And so if you're like, oh, well, what happens like, oh, if I need an IP or anything like that, it's in the syllabus and how you go about doing stuff like that. So you really wanna make sure that you're reading through that the first day of school. The, I mean, the, the number one thing that I have on there, of course, is my course schedule. Just kind of letting you know where everything is due, when we're going to meet or and all of that kind of stuff, how much everything's worth. So those are usually mostly the big highlights. So it's really important that you read that as soon as you get it. Yes, that is uh, very important. Now, um, what are some of the things that maybe. I know that you've mentioned some, but what are some of the things that. Actually, cause the students to fail the class, like. And and this is very generic. What are the kind of the pitfalls that they end up having that maybe one or two that stand out to you that maybe you haven't mentioned or I think uh, I think we mentioned like the top two time management, you waiting to the very, very last moment to try to get everything done. Um, we can track that you're just logging in. A lot of students are like, I've been working on it. And I'm like, I can track when you log in. I don't see you logging in. So um, and I'm sitting here eating popcorn, just seeing if you're gonna get it all done in a day. Okay. So you really want to make sure that you're spacing that out. So time management is huge, and then communication is huge. If if you don't understand something, you should come ask. And I just I really want to make sure you're how many of y'all have kids? Just me. Okay. Okay. Cool. I saw a baby okay. in there somewhere. Yes, I know the cutest thing. I was like, oh, this is a baby. Okay. So uh, some of y'all have kids. If your kids, when your kids go to school and they don't understand something and they come to you and say, mommy, I didn't understand this or daddy, I didn't understand this. One of the first things you say is, did you ask your teacher? But yet you don't want to follow that same advice. Okay. So if you don't understand something or you don't get something, you need to ask your teacher. That's what we're here to do. Okay. And then we can, we can get saying, hey, if you need some more one-on-one -on -one help, here's the academic studio. Or come sit in with me in my office and we can go over this. Because that is what we're here to do. So make sure that you're asking any and every question. Make sure that you're spacing your material out. Just get the work done. Just do the work. So we have a lot of active duty military in here right now. And uh, we have Watson asking, is, this, is there a system set in place for individuals who have field exercises and may not be able to communicate with instructors and or complete certain assignments in a specific amount of time. I don't even know if it's a jar. I'm a brat. I'm a brat and I was a, 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 a army wife for a very long time. So I understand. I understand the things like that. We all do. The things like that are going to happen. Biggest thing, communication. Just let us know. Like if you just let us know, hey, I'm going to the field next week. What what can we do? And you like, oh, here's my you know orders, and they have me doing even CQ. Oh, I have CQ for 24 hours, and they don't give me internet, and I'm gonna miss this due date. Is can I make it due tomorrow? Just communicate with us, and we can ahead of time. That. Exactly. I was gonna say it before it happens. If you come to me three weeks after a due date, and say, oh, I had CQ or I had the field, and that's why I didn't do it. That no, we need to be proactive rather than reactive. Proactive rather than reactive. Absolutely. Um, and just one thing to keep in mind is that each instructor may handle things a little bit differently. Some instructors may say, hey, you need to do it before you go. Others might say, let's arrange to do it afterwards. So don't just think, so if you have both Dr. Crusili and myself as an instructor, don't just think because you went to her and she said, this is what we'll do, that I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, we might, we may, and we may not. It's up to that individual instructor. So make sure to reach out to each one of them and then make sure that you are tracking which each one of them gives back to you um, because that is so important. Um, and again, just communication is the biggest thing. Um, I also saw a question about um, Blackboard that you can get into Blackboard, but you don't see your course. So I know that I said you might see it today, um, but the standard answer is three days before, which would be Friday. Um, I, I, the reason I said today is because every once in a while um, they open them early. Uh, I don't know what the, you know, what, what causes that, but most of the time it's Friday. So um, check back tomorrow um, around lunchtime and you should be able to see it. <clears throat> Yes, that's excellent. Um, uh, 
if we're I'm not sure what this means, but if we're not starting in the summer, do we have to do the mandatory assignment? Oh, at the beginning. Oh, okay. So yeah, the mandatory assignment won't be until your course starts. So um, just check the syllabus. Um, should be on page two of the syllabus, but some instructors might have it under frequently asked questions. It's somewhere on the syllabus um, that you will see what you have to do and by what date. And if it's not there, you can reach out to your instructor and say, you know, what is my participation requirement? So I see that doc, uh, that um, Kerwin Flaherty is here, and I just want to bring him in. He is one of our faculty members, and we have quite a few. Uh, he oversees the medical billing coding and medical part of. Anyway, I'm going to let him explain it, but we have a whole bunch of medical coding. Well, not a whole bunch, but there was a, quite a few at the beginning of this call, and I just want to make sure that you kind of bring in and that they meet you because you're probably one of their either faculty members or if they need they need help that you're definitely one of their resources yeah of course um can you hear me oh yep okay um i uh my name is carwin flaherty uh as Maricelli said i'm a uh, faculty in uh office department of office technology um in the um, on the medical side uh, of the house and uh yeah, uh, I teach courses in uh, anatomy and physiology, uh, medical coding, coding and billing, um, medical administration. Uh, and if you have any questions about any of that, uh, definitely reach out to me. I'll post my contact info in the chat um, and uh, any other kind of general questions. Uh, if you run into any issues, if you have trouble uh, registering for classes or just want to uh, chat about career prospects or whatever, just shoot me a message um, and I'll be I'll be happy to chat. I do have a question for you because you're one of the areas that have self, like you have open registration, like any, your classes could in theory start at any time. And there's only a few of those programs on campus and you have one of them. Yeah. Um, can you kind of explain how that works? It, because it's basically everything that we have under the career and technical Kate, whatever the Kate stands for career uh, and technical education yeah that's right yeah uh so yeah uh we have the uh one of, one of the coolest uh things on on campus is the uh, is the kate it's our uh, self-paced learning lab um it uh starts for us in office technology it starts every monday uh so you can register for classes uh and take uh our entire program um at your own pace uh and so what that truly means is that you can start class um you know it takes generally about two weeks for uh your financial aid to sort of get all straightened out uh but once you get started and get rolling uh you can work through your classes at your own pace and once you finish a class you can start working on your next one um that's really fantastic for folks that uh you know have jobs uh our parents um have other commitments that, that, that they're responsible for um we have faculty that are in the classroom in the self-paced lab um, Monday through Thursday uh, from eight to six, um, and they're there to help you, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, to to help you with what, whatever questions you have. Um, generally, uh, uh, if you're not uh, able to come to campus uh, for whatever reason, because we also have our remote uh, self-paced program, uh, we have uh, you know virtual meetings. You saw when I posted my contact info there. Uh, my, uh, appointment link, uh, you know, we will do, uh, video, video meetings like this, uh, phone calls, uh, we'll do spoke signals if you need to, what, whatever, uh, method of contact you need, uh, we will work with you and, and make sure that we're able to help you, um, in that way. Um, it, but yeah, the, the self-paced program, it's, it's the same curriculum that we offer, um, in our traditional classes. Um, and it's really, uh, it's a great opportunity for, for students that, that need something, uh, you know, in a different modality. Um, and it's, I, I really recommend it for uh, students that might be a little bit nervous about taking an online class uh, because it is the same curriculum uh, and same format as our online material. Um, and so you can do that and kind of get that face-to-face one-on-one contact to sort of help you get through that first semester. Uh, and then if you're comfortable, then you can, you know, go full online, go full remote um, and work that way. Um, and if not, then you can stay with us on campus and keep working that way. Uh, so whatever you need to do, we're, we're, we're here to help you, uh, get through and, uh, you know, uh, all the faculty here just wants you to, uh, you know, be successful and to, to get to where you want to go. And, you know, ultimately that's our, that's our main goal. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for all our panel. I appreciate you always, uh, giving us these great tips and, uh, being able to help us out.
uh, students, this is what your faculty is like. Talk to them, please. Um, I will say for those of you that are scared of math, this is the most fun math department I have ever met in my life. I never saw faculty in the math department that was actually excited about math and made it fun. I don't know. It always blows my mind when I think about I second it. Second that. Yeah, they're yeah, fantastic. They really that. are. It's just it's just very weird. They break yeah. the stereotype of the uh, math professor. Thanks, um, guys. Yeah, just because they I, bring the energy. Yes. <laughs> I, wow. Yeah, it's energy fantastic. Is true. It's almost like they have a Red Bull every hour. Um, <laughs> But they don't. It's crazy. Well, coffee, okay, fine. Uh, but some of them don't, and they're still like, what? Seven o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh my god. Um. Anyway, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. We can't do this without y'all. So thank you. Um. I wanna uh, now invite our financial aid slash VA team to come on board. They're here already, but um, I want them to introduce. Juice, maybe Tina, maybe you can start and then um, we can kind of go from there. Sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Tina Sanchez Urieta, a loan officer, and we have here Shoni Morrow. She's our aid technician and she's here as well. So we will give you an overall um, information as far as financial aid. And I really want to say welcome, welcome students and um, we're here to help. If you have any questions, I already put our financial aid um, phone number in my direct line number so we can further assist you. Uh, first, I'm gonna talk about the FAFSA and the process, the initial process for the financial aid. And then um, Shoni will be adding a little more information. We will be sharing headsets, um, so we'll just pass them on back and forth. Um, as far as the financial aid, the primarily and the main step um, to complete is the FAFSA. So the, the free application for federal student aid needs to be completed. Um, if students uh, are still interested in uh, participating in the summer, summer classes and you do not have any aid, go ahead and submit the 22-23 academic. Uh, year FAFSA and use the income tax of 2020. If you are thinking of starting the fall of 23, go ahead and submit the FAFSA for the 23-24 academic year and use the income taxes 2021 income taxes, so two years prior. Um, and um, as far as the, um, the entire process, once um, once that we receive the information, usually it takes about three to five business days for us to get an update from the Department of Education, whether you were accepted, denied, verification required. Uh, then we go ahead and um, continue processing your file. After that, there will be um, a section where um, it'll generate and package the financial aid. It'll include the loans if you're eligible for loans. It'll include the federal Pell Grant and then uh, they will be listed as pending status, meaning that you will need students, you you will need to log into your Eagle Self Service account. Once you're in your Eagle Self Service account, you would have to accept or decline the loans. Um, as far as um, advising you, I will highly recommend um, to make sure that your student um, <clears throat> that your student account has the correct phone number, email that you constantly monitor your Eagle Self Service account for financial aid activities and um, just um, email us if you have any any questions or contact us. I'm going to head over, uh, pass it over to Shoni and she will be able to add provide more information. Hello, good morning, good morning y'all. How's everybody doing? Hopefully good, right? Because you're talking to financial aid. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so I do want to add on to the Pell Grant, okay? And I want to touch base on what Tina just now touched base on. Um, it's very important that you get that FAFSA application in, okay? Because once you get that FAFSA application in, there's other grants that can go toward that as well, like the TEOG grant, the CTC set aside grant. So there's other little things that you can apply for and submit applications for to help you get through school and have additional funding and money. Okay, so make sure that 
Now, one thing I wanted to give y'all like a little caution on, I don't want y'all to say you're going to get an email once you fill out your FAFSA and they're like, congratulations, you filled out your FAFSA kind of thing. That does not mean that it's automatically approved, okay? Call us and let us know, hey, I wanted to follow up on my FAFSA application. That way we can see if you're missing any kind of documentation, anything of that nature to help y'all get it through faster, okay? So it usually takes four to six weeks of processing. We don't like waiting that long. So that's why I want y'all to take that initiative and sit here and say, hey, I, I need to know what kind of documentation I need so I can hurry up and get that approved, okay? What happens next? Once that is approved, that money goes to the business office, okay? The business office automatically takes the funds away um, for your tuition and fees, and then the additional money will be released to your personal account around 30 days afterwards, okay? A lot of students don't understand that process, so you don't have to call up here and be like, is my funds gonna get released? Are y'all paying? I have a negative amount on my account. It's it's okay, okay? Just call for any simple little thing because there's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to us. We wanna make sure that y'all are taken care of, all right? Um, all right. Also, I am the work study supervisor. I just now take took over this program yesterday, so I'm super excited about it. A little bit about the work study program. Um, you have to have financial aid on file, so make sure you have your FAFSA, okay? And um, the, this program is amazing. It actually works around your school schedule, okay? If you are interested in getting hands-on experience, being in the departments that you actually want to go to and fulfill your degree in, we can actually help you do that, okay? I was actually a work study. So uh, I worked over in career services. I absolutely loved it. I had time to study and do my test and everything else, okay? All you gotta do is tell your supervisor, hey, I need a little break. And then you go about your merry way, take your test and come back and just workforce. It's 19, point, uh, 19 and a half hours a week. So it's not a full-time position, but if you're wanting a little extra money in your pocket, please fill out an application. Um, it'll be coming to me and I will start uh, looking at applications and sending them out to the departments for them to pick their work studies because it's actually the departments that actually hire you. So it is a literal job. It's just, we're helping y'all make sure that you have that education come first, okay? Um, other than that, welcome to CTC. Go Eagles. I am an Eagle. I graduated from here, so y'all can do it. Super proud of y'all and welcome. Thank you. We right now have a, um, thank you. Thank you, Shoni. I'm sorry. Thank was you. there a question? Yeah, we have a few questions. Okay. So, um, uh, what documents do I need to apply for grants for financial aid? Okay, as far as the documents that are required for grants, uh, mainly uh, the FAFSA completed, um, students do need to be on academic standing, which means GPA 2.0 and um, minimum 2.0 GPA, uh, not on any suspension, not on, on any max time frame. So we do look at the entire student account information and verify if they're eligible for the grants. Okay. Uh, they, they can go on, students can go on eTreef and actually the eTreef portal, uh, they can look at the forms, pull up the grants forms, and it'll give you a little more information as to what's required, what documents are required. Great. Um, and um, is there another, do they have to contact you about the FAFSA or is there another way that they can look and see if their FAFSA has come through? Okay, so we advise students to log in into studentaid.gov. That's S T U D E N T A I D dot G O V. Once they log into studentaid.gov, the Department of Education website, they can verify also the uh, their status of their FASBA. They can. That's where we um, advise students to also log into as far as any exit counselings that they need to complete, entrance counselling, master promissory notes that they need to complete. It's all through the studentaid.gov website. Okay, and can they also check it through our Eagle Cell service once it's come through? Um, as far as the approval or the, uh, um, they can log, they can view uh, a login to their Eagle Self Service as far as updating their bank, direct bank account information, as far as the uh, checking their financial aid activities. Um, I think it also offers uh, their status. If they were accepted for any grants, everything will be listed on Eagle Self Service. 
Okay. I have a question from Facebook. It says, okay. quick question. Why are medical clinicals only given one credit hour for financial aid purpose when we have to complete 98 contact hours? So why is a medical clinic given only one hour as far clinicals. as uh, clinicals? Is this a lab? It's I, I think that that's like for nursing when they go out. Nursing. I'm not quite sure. It's, it's referring as far as the credits, um, the classes and the credits. It's probably has to do with part of it is kind of a lab. A lab. Part of it. Um, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I Can you explain the lab part though? As far as the lab, I'm not quite sure. Um, I would have to contact the student directly and get a little more information. I'm I'm not quite sure. She's talking about EMT clinicals. So EMT usually clinicals. for the clinicals, it's a class. Um, I'm I'm guessing that even though it's that many hours per se, it's attached to something else. But maybe Alexandra, can you contact? Um, I'll put her information in, and then you can contact our financial aid. Um, okay. Whoa. So I got a little bit of updated information on that for why, why it's only one credit hour. So Thank the you. case center and the nursing center, EMT, and also the police officers, because y'all. I'm sorry, I don't mean to say y'all all the time, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody. Um, they're on a different program. We're on credit hours. They're on hours, so it's going to show one, but we know the system knows to kick in whenever that one credit hour shows because you're in a different program and it's separate from what our regular program would be as three credit hours and things like that. So you're still going to see that um, one. And once you finish that one, you would start another one and that's how it'll, go. it'll release a little bit of funds. And then the next class that starts, it'll release a little bit of funds more. So your classes are still going to be paid for. You're still going to have money in there um, for those Kate Center students and then the EMT students. So you don't have to worry about that part. The system knows that y'all are a little bit different compared to the, the three credit hours and how it's usually based off of. Does that make yeah. sense? I think she's talking about because they have to travel okay. to other places and stuff. And I think that that's just usually travel to the site. It's 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 just like having to buy your um, materials for the class and stuff like that. It's something that you it's expected that you right. give. You're only paying for um, the actual metric relation of the class. So that's also why we really encourage the FAFSA because the FAFSA takes your cost of living into consideration. So um, when we see that financial need, a lot of times somebody will have more financial aid than what somebody else doesn't because of the, the need status. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So I really, really quickly want to give a, a chance for Vicki to say hi um, and to kind of explain who she is and what she does. So Vicki, can you explain to, to everybody who you are and what you do? Sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Vicki Putzer. I'm the new coordinator for Veteran Services. Um, our department handles every type of VA benefit. So whether you have Chapter 33, Chapter 35, Chapter 31, you come see us and we're going to assist you with using those benefits with CTC, reporting your information to the VA so you can start getting your benefit while you're attending school. Um, we're step three in the process when it comes to getting through becoming a new student with CTC. So first you apply, then you get registered, and then you come see us and we teach you how to use your VA benefit. Our processes have changed a lot in the last six months. You no longer need to submit a certificate of eligibility to our office. We have the ability to look that information up in real time through the VA. The only document you need to submit to our office is what's called a VEC, a Veterans Enrollment Certificate. And you're gonna submit this document once you've registered for your classes. We process that form and then we send your information to the VA. That's the simplicity of the process. If you have any questions or need more information about how to submit your VEC, contact our office and we'll be happy to send you some instructional guides to do that. I'll put all of our information in the chat, but please feel free to reach out to us. We're here to assist you and we want to help you get through the process. All right, really quick. Um, can going back uh, last question before we continue. Uh, when do students have access to use financial aid to purchase books? Dina, you're muted. 
I'm sorry, what was the question? When can students have access to their financial aid to purchase books? Okay, um, as far as that, uh, the federal Pell, the federal Pell Grant and um, the loans, it depends based on uh, when the classes start. Usually disbursements are made 10 days prior to the start day of class. So when the when the system recognizes a total of six credit hours, the loan will release and it'll be 10 days prior to whenever the student um, has, you know, starts a class. OK, all right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Uh, we appreciate you coming on board and talking about financial aid and veteran services. Please uh, make sure they already put their information in the chat. But if you have any questions, please go ahead and reach out to them and they will go into more details and really look at the specifics of what you guys are actually needing. Um, financial aid and VA usually is that one thing that it's a little bit hard because everybody has something that's slightly different and it's a little bit hard to sometimes answer a lot of the questions um, that are very specific. So thank you ladies, I really appreciate you participating. You're welcome. All right, and now it's time for academic advising and Eagle Self Service. And to talk to you guys about that, we have the one and the only Richard Lewis. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Richard Lewis. I'm one of the many academic advisors here on campus. Um, and kind of what we do is just help students from start to finish. If you guys don't know what to do, don't know where to go, come see us. And if we can't help you fully, we'll get you in the right direction. Um, so what I'm going to do today is show you guys how to use Eagle Self Service, how to get a lot of your processes completed online. Um, so what I'm going to do is share my screen and kind of walk you through how to search for a class, register for a class, and all the other nice features on there. Uh, if guys have a question at any point, feel free to stop me and I can elaborate on whatever I'm doing. So give me one second to get this pulled up. And can we see it? Cool. Um, so this is our main webpage, ctcd.edu. We're gonna go to student tools and we're gonna go to Eagle Self Service. And then from here, we'll log in. Um, what you'll do is you use a lowercase c in your seven digit student ID number. And then whatever password you create, of course. So once we get logged in, your screen will look a little different from this one. This is just a test account. Um, so there's more information on here, but you'll see the basics. You'll be able to see student planning, uh, financial aid, student finance, tax information. You'll be able to see your grades. But right now, what we're gonna do is go to student planning. So when you're searching and registering for the courses, um, one of the first things you wanna know is what classes to register for. So from there, we'll go to my progress. And as of right now, this program is academic undeclared, so there are no program requirements for it. But something you can do is, um, even if you're on a current program, you can always click where it says view new program. Um, and whatever you're interested in, it'll show you what your current credits will apply to and what you need to complete that degree. Um, and let's say I wanna be an accountant. So I'm gonna be an accountant today. So if I click on that, it'll regenerate everything and it'll bring up um, the accounting technician degree. And you'll see three lines down here. One of them says developmental studies requirements. One of them says general education requirements. And then one of them says major related requirements. Um, depending on your circumstances, developmental studies requirements may not be a thing for you. You may have passed your test. You may be exempt by SAT scores or prior military. Um, but if you do need developmental coursework, um, that's something we can advise you on. And then we'll put that actually in your program notes. So you'll be able to click on this and it'll let you know exactly what developmental classes you need or if you're done with your developmental. So right here, this person is done with developmental coursework and they passed the test for reading and writing. Um, so to see what classes we need, we can click um, general education requirements. If you hit show details, it'll pull up all the different sections you need for this degree. And as you click each section, it'll tell you what classes will satisfy that degree. Um, so as of right here, for the first group communications, you see that this is actually completed. Um, for the mathematics, it's not completed. So elementary statistics was taken, but we still need contemporary mathematics. <laughs> and that's going to lead me into my next thing. So you figured out what classes you need. Now let's go figure out what times and days are available. So what you can do is you can actually click on the class. And it'll bring you to the class information over here. 
where you can see what times, days, and all that good stuff is available. So this is the class information. If you wanted to, you can actually click the class syllabus and it'll tell you more about the learning outcomes of the class and what to expect. Um, and to be more specific about what you're looking for, if you go to the filter options area, let's say you only wanted to see online classes, you can click where it says distance learning, and now it's only gonna show you online classes. I say that because I want you to be careful because if you don't click it, it's gonna show you everywhere in the world. This is not a good example. Oh, well, I guess it is a good example. Um, or I'll take that back. All of these are distance learning, and you'll see that right here in the locations. 100% distance learning means it's online, or you'll see where they are offered face-to-face. -face. This one right here is gonna be on Fort Cavazos. This was also Fort Hood previously, just in case people didn't know. Um, but let's say, I wanted to pick contemporary mathematics. I'm gonna be mindful of the start and the end date. So this class starts June 5th, ends August 11th, um, but it looks like it's waitlisted. That means there's no seats available in it. Um, I'll add that to my schedule anyway and show you how that works. But then I'm also gonna add a class that has seats available. So 13 seats available, 20 total, uh, and I'm gonna add that as well. So you can add multiple classes. You can add the one class that you want. Um, after you found the class, if you wanted to add more classes, we can actually just type it in here. And I'll just type in government. It'll do the same thing. It'll bring it to this screen. You can go to filter options to, to minimize all the different locations you see. You can also click what different semester you wanna see. So let's actually add a fall class this time. We actually added summer for the first part. We we'll had a fall class for this one. And this one is the example I was looking for. Um, if you don't click where you wanna see in the locations, they're gonna show you everywhere in the world. And we are clearly not at Fort Johnson. So you are not eligible for this class. You would be eligible for online classes, classes on Fort Cavazos, or classes on our main campus. Um, so we're not gonna add that class. We've added all the classes we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go home. We're gonna go back to student planning. Last time we were in my progress to see what classes we need, but now we're gonna to go to plan and schedule to see the classes that we did plan. Um, and here you'll see all these classes right here that I planned. These are online classes, so you will not see them on your schedule, but if your class had a face-to-face -face meeting time, then you would actually see it on your schedule. You can see what classes conflict and just see how your whole week will play out. Um, over here, we're gonna have two options. For the class that is available um, and has seats available, we can click register. However, I'm not gonna do that. If anything, I'm gonna remove this class. Same thing for this class. If you were really intent on getting this class because you like the instructor, you can waitlist this class and you would do that by clicking waitlist. Um, so if somebody drops, you would be alerted to get into that class, but it is you know, time sensitive. So you wanna make sure you're looking at your emails and all that good stuff. Um, so I'm gonna remove that one. Okay, cool. So you've found what classes you need, you've added them to your schedule, and let's say we theoretically registered for these classes, now we wanna pay for the classes. So what you can do is use this little home icon one more time, it'll take you back to this home screen, and what you'll be able to do is click student finance. That's gonna bring up your balance for the semester and all your other previous semesters. So you can get a statement on what you were charged, um, what you owe, and you can also make payments here. So if you click make payment, it's gonna take you to the area where you can submit your card information um, and make payments for the class that way. Um, if you're not paying out of pocket and you're gonna be using financial aid, um, you can also go to this financial aid section just to check on your financial aid status. So you wanna make sure you're in the right school year. And then you also wanna make sure you're being mindful of all the warnings that come up. Um, this student right here, has met their maximum time frame for financial aid. Um, so at that point, they might not be eligible. So they would wanna contact financial aid and all their contact information is up here. Um, and you can reach out to them to figure out what you need to do to get financial aid or move forward. There's also a nice little checklist right here that tells you everything you need to do. So once you do your application, the next step is to complete the required documents and then follow the you know appropriate um, processes after that. So we found what classes we needed. We added them to our schedule. We theoretically registered, so now we have a balance. So you can go to student finance to pay for that, 
or like I mentioned, you can go to financial aid to check on your financial aid status, so they'll pay for it. Now, um, after your financial aid releases for your tuition and you still have money left over, um, you are going to get a refund for that. So what you can do is you can actually go to banking information and you can update your bank account information to get direct deposit. If you don't do that, you'll get a physical check to whatever address we have on file. Um, and that might take a little longer to get to you. So if you want to make sure you get it quickly, um, make sure you do that bank account information. Um, something else you can do is after your classes have all completed and things like that, and you want to check on your grades, you can do that here. It'll show you your grades by term and let you know your grade point average by term and also your um, your final grades. What we'll also be able to do here is, and I won't click on it because we don't want to give too much information out, but for the user profile, if you click on that, you'll be able to see all of your student information. So if you needed to, you can update your email address, you can update your physical address, um, your phone number, basically anything you need for us to reach out to you and just make sure we're reaching out to the right person. Um, and that's really the gist of the, you know, Eagle Self Service. Like I mentioned, there's more options on here than you'll have, but the main ones for you to be mindful of is student planning to find out what classes you need and register for those classes. Uh, student finance to go make payments for your classes if that's what you're doing. Financial aid to make sure you have financial aid on file to pay for your classes. And then banking information to get a direct deposit and then your grades right here to follow up at some point. Um, for students who are filing their taxes, you can actually go here to get your tax information. Um, I believe you can get your W-2s. If you work here, you can get your 1098s if you spend money on books, um, so on and so forth. So Eagle Self Service is basically gonna be a portal that allows you to do a, a lot, if not all of your student activities in one spot. And of course, if you had questions on it, again, academic advising is a place to come and we can kind of walk you through how to get through all of that. Um, that's really the spiel I have for academic advising. So Maricelli, did you have any questions that popped up while I was doing that? Well, yes. And then I also wanted to see if you could explain something because, sure. you know, classes for the, for the summer start Monday, but mm -hmm. then they can also start registering for their fall classes on Monday. Correct. So what is, um, can they then now start planning their fall classes? Absolutely. Um, so registration for the fall semester starts June 5th, but as long as those class information is out there, you can still add those classes to your schedule. So when June 4th, 1159 rolls around, you can click that register button and you can make sure you have seats for that class. Um, you definitely wanna be doing that now, especially for those science classes, um, maybe even some of those math classes. Um, a lot of those classes are in high demand, so they fill up pretty quick. I will tell you, that this is the one thing that's gonna that if you're listening to and actually take into account has served a lot. I used to be in a group chat with my college ambassadors, and that I would get every time classes would open at midnight, it would be like, "Yep, I got my class," or "No, I didn't get my class," because they were at midnight. Yeah. Registering, making sure they got the class that they wanted or the section that they wanted. Uh, so that is a really hot tip for you guys. For sure, and I'm actually looking at the chat right now and I saw two great questions come up. One of them was about Blackboard. Um, so this is where you go search and register for classes at. If you sign up for an online class, you will not be participating in that class here. You'd be participating in that class on Blackboard. Um, and that's where you would submit your assignments and do all that good stuff at. Um, I think there was also a question about if you were to log into Eagle Self Service and all you see is the student finance tab, and sometimes that happens. Um, that's something we can easily fix. If you contact our records and registration department, um, they'll be able to get your account updated so you can see everything you're supposed to, like student planning, financial aid, and student finance, as well as your tax information, bank account information, all that good stuff. How long does it take about for credits to transfer from my previous college? Uh, if you send in your transcripts, that process has been known to take a while, but I believe they've, they've been trying to reduce the wait time. Um, I would give it about two weeks and then you can follow up with this. And then at that point, we should have a good idea of what classes transfer as what, you know, things like that. I think the main thing would be how you're sending your transcripts. If you send them through mail, it's going to take a lot longer. If you send them electronically, we'll be able to receive them quicker um, and have those articulated for you in a faster, faster manner. And if they're military, they have to request evaluation right absolutely so if you're military especially active duty um you do want to send in your jst 
and then you want to send in all of your academic transcripts. Um, at that point, you can get on eTrieve, our eForms portal, and then there is a request for your um, evaluation to be complete. So that way they can just make sure you have your stuff, all your stuff, and give you the appropriate credit so you're not taking anything you don't need. Yes. Uh, I saw one question, um, Richard. It said, uh, can we still register for a class for the fall while taking a prerequisite? That is a good question. Um, sometimes the system doesn't allow you to do that, but there are cases where you can. Um, uh, that's a tough one. I want to say yes, because what would happen is as long as you pass that class with a C or above, then you're good. But sometimes we do run reports where we can see that a student is registered for a class that they're not supposed to be in. Um, so there are, you know, no safety nets that will prevent them from being in that class if they're not supposed to be in that class. In that situation, are they best served to contact an advisor? One of Absolutely. the to help them get registered for that class and deal with that issue? Absolutely. Anytime there's any uncertainty, please reach out to us. Reach out early, reach out often. Um, bother us as much as you need to. Can you let them know how they can get a hold of you? That's yeah, sure. Next. And there um, are the different options that you have. For the yeah, I'll type in um, some of that information in the chat. Um, if you're in the local service service area, um, you can always visit us in person. We do walk in visits. Um, if you are located outside of the local service area, if you're in a different state, if you're overseas, um, we have an Eagles on call department that will actually be able to assist you over the phone and through emails and they have staggered hours. So they're here for basically all the different time zones. Um, like I mentioned, I'll put all that information in the chat shortly. But those would be the two main departments we have, and it doesn't matter what student you are. You can reach out to either department. We can help you out appropriately. It's just a little bit easier if you know if you're local, you come see us. If you are out of state, you go see them. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. All Richard, right. Anybody you go, have any other questions? Yes, I'm sorry, Marcella. Richard, before you go, I do see um, a question. Um, how do we check how many credits we have after JSTs were evaluated? Um, you can do that on Eagle Self Service. If you go to the My Progress section, after your credits have been articulated, they will be input. Um, they will either populate in the other courses section if they don't apply to anywhere on your degree, but if they do apply to your degree, then they'll go to the appropriate sections. So. Um, a great example is a lot of students on our, let's say, automotive you know, welding programs or anything like that. If they have previous experience with that in the military, then actually that actually gets populated into the appropriate areas. Um, so my progress on Eagle Self Service is where you can go to check on the status of your credits, what you earned, what you got transferred in, and what you still need. All right, thank you so much, Richard. I really, really appreciate your help. Um, this has been awesome. Um, as always, you're always a great help. Everybody, please contact advising, seek out Richard. He really has, just so you know, he started here as a student and we never let him go. No, for sure. That's I, that's you, how awesome he is. You did mention work study in the in the previous um, you know, segment, and that is how I started on campus. I started as a work study. They are very flexible with your hours, guys. Um, it's work study for a reason. You get to work, but then you also get to study. Um, you just gotta make sure you do talk to your supervisors and they are very, very willing to work with you. Um, but no, and that led to a very fruitful academic career with CTC as well as a, a professional career. Um, yes. So yeah, definitely explore those options. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, Nicole, are you here? Are you going to be our person? I'm here. Yes. I Hi. am so excited. It's my first um, new student orientation. So I've been yes, making notes. And stuff. <laughs> I, I was like, I don't know who's doing it. And I was yeah, like, he's I got a, he's got a, he, he took a demotion for a little bit today. He's actually doing training with the officers. So he's patrolling. He's like police officer today. So I'm here for the chief of police. Um, and he said that you're going to flip for me or you have yes. the presentation. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm getting it. So everybody, just so that you know, we actually do have a campus police. They are a full police force. And uh, here we have Nicole. She is their main dispatcher. And actually, she's the one that keeps the police in check. I'm just, <laughs> just between us. 
Um, Chief will tell you that I'm his number two. We make sure that we we have we know where the rank is in the office. So yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely. All yeah. right, I am about to. Oh wait, I did something wrong. Uh, here we go. Share, and then I need to do this. Okay, can you see the PowerPoint now? Yeah, I do. Thank you. Okay, so take your window. Um, Okay, so um, just a few things. Uh, I'm sorry, but as she said, my name is Nicole Pierce and I work with the campus police. Um, there's just a few things I'm going to go over uh, just about our department today, uh, who we are, our, um, the services we provide, um, the police officers provide. Um, the Clery Act and Title IX will go over your rights and responsibilities, emergency alerts, um, campus carry. And then there's also a video um, that we'll have a link to that we'll want you to um, watch um, it's called um, craze, but it's for campus safety as well. So um, you could just skip to the next one. And so who we are, you know, um, everybody automatically likes to kind of put us in a bubble of campus police, um, mall cops, you know, things like that. But um, our police officers at, are actually, you can um, flip, sorry, go to the next one. Our police officers are all actually, um, um, have all of their licenses in the state of Texas. They've attended the police academy. Um, they have. They all have to do their um, ongoing continuing credits so that they can keep their licenses. And they have powers. They're actually unique because they actually um, cover two counties. We have a little portion of Coriel County, and then um, the majority of our campus is Bell. But so they're actually jur uh, have jurisdiction in both. So. Um, so that's that part. And then what we do is we have um, calls for service. So if you have any issues you need, um, you know, uh, your car needs to be unlocked or your battery's dead, we have um, both uh, police officers, but we have safety officers as well. Um, we'll try to do an unlock on your vehicle. Um, we do battery jumps and uh, the lost and found, any first aid, um, stuff like that is all at the campus police, unless of course it's an emergency, then we'll come to you. Um, parking permits, we need you to come to the office. Any vehicle that you park on campus, we'd like to have a permit. We'll need your CTC ID, uh, your driver's license, and then the current registration for any vehicle that you want to um, get a permit on. You can have as many permits as you need. We just need each vehicle to have a permit, so. Um, Jot down the phone number, call us anytime if you have any um, questions or concerns, of course, 911 if you have an emergency. Um, but that number is actually forwarded to the officers when our office is closed, so you can get a hold of anybody 24-7. Uh, so and the permits are free, right? Uh, yes, our permits are always free, correct. Um, the fine for not having one is $25, so you save a little bit of money if you get a permit. <laughs> Okay, so um, the Clery Act um, of 1990 requires all schools um, to um, collect uh, all of our crime statistics, uh, report it to the Department of Education. We are also required to publish that. Um, it's always gonna be online. Um, we have a annual security report that's always, it's gonna be the, the previous um, uh, three years, but it's always gonna be online uh, on the website. You can come to our department, we'll print it out for you if you want to. Um, but that's uh, just basically the crime statistics that are kept on campus and we're required to um, report those numbers. Um, if you want to keep track or you wanna look, if you're considering here, or even if it's like, you know, anywhere else, there's actually, um, Chief wants you guys to know that there's an app that you can download that's the Texas Safety for you. And it'll actually give you those stats online right away. Um, anything that we've got published, you wouldn't have to actually go to our website and look for it. So that's that. Um, so your rights and responsibilities as a student really, um, it, you definitely need to make sure you're responsible to know the, the rules and regulations on campus, um, review over your, um, your student code of conduct policies, it's all online. Um, our campus policies are there, we have zero tolerance. Um, Title IX, sexual assault, harassment, dating violence, drug and alcohol abuse, smoking free, free speech. So if you want to, um, we've had people actually um, want to come on campus and do like a, uh, a group thing where they, maybe for a political, they want to, uh, I don't know, help me out, Maricelli, like when they have to get your permission for something. Well, they, uh, for basically, if anybody wants to express their free, their right to free speech, there is Thank a you. process that uh, requires you to go through campus police and explain what you need, like what space you're looking to have. And uh, there's just, they just want to make sure that 
Uh, yes, you want the free speech, that's fine, but there are certain things that we want to make sure that you're going to be safe and everybody else is going to be safe. So there's a process so that you can have the space necessary and the support necessary. As well. Thank you. The approvals and things. I Thank you. I couldn't get that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so um, just make sure that you're um, you're keeping up on that and that you understand that we have campus policies, but then you um, also have where there's violations of the law. So if something happens on campus, we can handle it like on the legal side with the campus police, but then you also have to go through student life um, uh, and, you know, uh, there's there's usually an, an internal investigation and then the student code of conduct is is followed the policy so and and um one of the things is that if you're here online and you're like oh my god i am not in central campus this does not apply to me in any way shape or form um it ends up being that we have had situations where students uh, there have been a concern for their safety or something of that nature. And our campus police here from Central Texas will reach out to campuses or to police forces from different inst areas, institutions, uh, oh, yeah. local police or state police from other areas, federal. So there is, it, don't think that they, even though they don't have direct jurisdiction outside of Texas, but that doesn't mean that they don't partner with other police forces or other institutions to make sure that everybody is safe. Right, correct, thank you. Uh, okay, so um, we'll go to the next one. Um, so our um, Eagle emergency alerts, um, anytime that there is an emergency situation on campus, we have a system that's gonna um, uh, send you out, a, like it says, an email, text messages, or it'll be a voice message. Um, you can sign up as many emails as, as many phone numbers as you want. Um, they are always sent out in situations, obviously, if there's an emergency on campus, um, active shoot or something like that. But also when we have the freezes um, in Texas, it freezes over every February, apparently. Um, and, you know, we close down the state of Texas when it gets cold. So we don't, that's how we know that we don't need to come on campus and that you know campus has been closed or that, that the classes have been canceled um if you go online we have different um because if there's an emergency on campus there are, obviously there's alarms that'll go off audibly um, but you can also listen to those online if you um you go onto the website um and take a listen to those so um on the next slide it actually just tells you exactly what you need um for uh the information that you need to get it set up um, I actually have it going to me, to my email, and then I get it texted to me as well. So that way I know for sure, like when I wake up in the morning, if I have to go to work, it's great. So, um, so I think that's good with that. Are there any questions or anything? Uh, no. And then you can also make changes through Eagle self service. Oh, there. Eagle self service. I'm sorry. Thank you. I set that up so long ago. I haven't done it. <laughs> I know, me, I have the same issue. Once I did it, I was good. Okay, so um, campus carry. Um, about the law, I mean, essentially, if you have your license to carry in Texas, you are allowed to come on campus as long as it's concealed. We do have gun-free zones. Um, obviously, they're listed there. Early college, anything that has anything that's always going to have underage, um, under 18 events that we have, um, uh, where we have the mental health care service locations, areas involving the sporting or inter, um, interscholastic events, uh, and then Morton Hall, um, the residence hall with some exceptions. But um, we also have events that we will have to put up the signs. There'll be, you'll see the 30 out six sign where you can't carry past that sign. Um, so just kind of pay attention to where you're at and what you're doing. Um, and, um, <clears throat> you um, there's a question. I thought you didn't need a license to carry in Texas. You need a license to conceal carry on campus. Thank you. All right. Um, and then the website, it just gives the um, inf information and in reference to um, the actual law and there's links there that we have. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Go to the next one. Is this the end? Almost. Oh, I think he messed up my screens. <laughs> I don't, I'm not on that page. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, so the craze um, is the um, video that we have online that you can actually go um, on and watch. We actually, yes, thank you. We actually encourage you to go um, go on and watch that one because um, it actually walks you through what to do in the event. You know, so something happens, we send out the alert, and the first thing that you do is you want to avoid it, right? So if you're not in the building, you're not in the area, and you've got the alert, get away. 
don't try to approach, don't, don't, if you're in the building, do whatever you have to do to go away from it. Um, deny. Um, if you can't avoid it completely, uh, close your door, lock your door, close your blinds, whatever you have to do so that you can get under your desk so that they can't see you just, um, and then, you know, worst case scenario, if you need to, um, and it's something that you feel like you can do, you need to defend yourself. Um, I mean, obviously we all know what that is. We have whatever we need to do to defend ourselves. So, um, definitely we, we encourage you to go online and, and, and watch that video. Cause it's, it's, it's what chief, um, Baragon, um, actually likes everybody to watch. So there's that one. Um, is that my next one? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Do I have any questions or anything? Or... Let's see. Um, if another state concealed license is accepted by Texas, is that applicable? I that's I'm gonna have to get back with you on that one because I don't know the answer about the out of state. Can we get his in, or her information? And Chief will absolutely get back with them. Yes, I'm gonna put. Um, um chief bargain's information if that's okay and that way he can absolutely email him directly absolutely so chief is joseph barragan mm -hmm. j barragan at ctcd.edu you can email him and he can clarify that for you mm -hmm. um normally he does this but of course he's super busy <laughs> and uh trying to get stuff done yeah sorry he would definitely be able to answer that question and i i apologize i just don't have the answer right now yes um so let me see, do we have any others? No. Okay, cool. I think that was it. Um and and you. wait, Nicole, can you just remind my um I had gotten some private messages about parking again and just okay. what they have to sure what they um, have to do. Just one one more reminder. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Um so we're we do parking permits for all of this the vehicles that are parked on campus. You just need to come in, bring your current CTC ID, your driver's license, and then the vehicle's registration. Um, so even if like in the state of Texas, we have a sticker on our window that the paperwork, like we need the paperwork that it comes off of. Some people only have stickers that don't keep the paperwork. I just need a picture of the sticker, essentially, if you can bring that into us and then we can use that too. <clears throat> and, then, there's no cost for, and there's no cost for a parking permit. No cost, correct. And then can you explain about reserve parking and what yes. that means? Yes. Um, so reserved parking is for staff and faculty. We actually have those, um, they're paid for by staff and faculty. So in between like um, the, you know, between like 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., um, students aren't allowed to park in the reserved parking. We have reserved and open parking all over campus. Just make sure that when you're parking, you're just kind of paying attention to what's on the block in front of you. It'll actually say reserved, official use only, adjunct faculty. I mean, when you're pulling in, you know you, that it's visible. You should be able to see it. Yes. And then this has nothing to do with safety, but it kind of does. Every single semester when we start, especially the big semesters, people think that they're going to park right next to their building of their class. And certain parking areas fill up very, very quickly. It they doesn't really take do. much for them to fill up. So this is where you really need to plan out and come early, find a spot, think about where you, you know, what options you want to have in terms of parking and where you can do it. Because what ultimately happens is you think you're going to park here, you get to that parking lot, it's full, mm -hmm. and then you end up get parking either in a reserved parking lot or parking spot or worse, a handicap. Yeah, that's bad. We don't want you parking in the handicap spots. That's for Can sure. You explain the difference in price between the reserve and the handicap. Yeah. So, if you um, park in a reserve space, we have um, campus citations that are. Um, Police officers and safety officers can issue. It's the difference between it's like a $25 fine or $50 fine if you're parked in the reserved, or I'm sorry, $50 if you're parked in a handicap spot, and then um, $25 if you're in a reserve space. But I will tell you that if you're parked in a handicap spot and you're not supposed to be there, you don't have a handicap placard or the universal symbol on your your license plate, um, then you can actually get what's called a justice of the peace citation. That's like a 300 to $500 citation that actually goes to the courts. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, I guess I should probably, this is a good 
time to say it. Um, recently, I don't know how long it's been. Um, we used to, in the state of Texas, allow people to park in the res or in the uh, handicap spots with just your DV plates, and they've changed it now where you actually need that universal symbol or the placard. Just DV plates don't allow you to park in the handicap spots anymore. So, so just just avoid it, please. Um, just so you know, the people that actually where the park that are allowed to park in those reserve spots, they pay for that parking. And I know that it seems kind of, you know, weird for you, but as somebody who has a reserve parking and I actually pay for one, it's there. The reason is that I go in and out a lot to meetings and sometimes I will not find, you know, I would have to park very, very far to be able to get back to my job and be able to do what I have to do and coming in back and forth. Uh, to some of these meetings, I drive away, come back. Our campus is very big. Um, and then I, it would take a long time for me to get back to my office if I had to park in some of the, when it's super full, like as far as I sometimes have to. Mm -hmm. um, what times can they go to get a parking permit? So it's normal business hours. Um, uh, anytime between uh, 7.30 in the morning and 5.30 in the evening, Monday through Thursday. And then normally we're open on Fridays but until 11.30, but we have those summer hours. So our office won't be available for permits on Fridays until we're done with those summer hours. So um, Everybody should know, I don't think we've made this announcement. We are on summer hours this summer. And so oh. be aware, students, that if you are needing help with any department, not just the police, um, you really need to get your help Monday through Thursday. Um, 7.30 to 5.30, well, we do not have hours um, on on Friday through the summer. So if you need an administrative office, if you need academic advising, financial aid, whatever, please um, reach out to those offices Monday through Thursday. Yes, thank you. Anything else that I missed from the park from here? I think we're good. Great job, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm all right, guys, so we're almost to the end, but we have a few more things to cover. And I know I saw Larry somewhere around here. Larry, are you there? Is he here? I saw him too. Yep, yep. he's he's in there, but he might he might have stepped away. He's a very busy man lately. But um, right now, what we're going to go over um, is going to be the section that has to do with um, Title nine and uh, specifically title nine, and that's what Larry Murphy. He is our title nine coordinator amongst that's like 1 of his hats. Um, that's <laughs> he's, that's the hat he's wearing right now. You guys don't see it, but that's what um, what he has right now. He's going to talk to you a little bit about title nine, what that means and if you need assistance, how you can get it. Take it away, Larry. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm my name is Larry Murphy. I'm the director for risk management and the Title IX coordinator for Central Texas College. And what I'm gonna do real quick is share my screen. Um, so I can. So on um, CTC's website, if you ever need any information regarding Title IX. Um, just to give you a background, Title IX is a federal mandated program, and there's also mandates from the state that require anyone um, that provides information on sexual assault, sexual harassment, dating violence, stalking, uh, gender bias um, under the sexual misconduct side. Then there's another pillar that covers uh, pregnancy. So if um, an individual student is pregnant, or lactating, they can go over to disability services and see Dr. Shank and um, get accommodations for your class. Um, just because you are pregnant doesn't mean the uh, instructor has to give you time off or excuse absences. So you would have to go and see Dr. Shank and she would give you your accommodations. But with that being said, if you need information on Title IX, you can go to our main website. Um, scroll down to the bottom and under resources, you will see where it says Title IX. If you click on that, um, you will it will take you to the Title IX page and you will see all my information up there. You see training for Title IX personnel, then you see a link for training for students. 
all first time students are required to go through the Title IX training and the briefing. And you will see the link down here at the bottom. Click on that and it will bring up a um, a PowerPoint slide presentation for you to review. Now, let's say if you're on campus and something happens, someone harasses you or says something out of the way, um, is cat calling you or whatever the case may be. If you don't want to come in and talk to a physical person, you can come to our website and right here where it says reporter sexual misconduct, you can click on that and it will explain to you the purpose of the form, give you the definitions of sexual misconduct, sexual harassment, and let you know that you can submit an anonymous report. If you go here and fill out this report and determine whether it happened on campus, or off campus, where the location was, who was involved, um, what you feel that this constitutes, whether it's harassment, sexual violence, dating violence, domestic violence, sexual coercion, um, stalking, whatever the case may be, you can mark that. And then down here at the bottom, you can mark whether you notified campus police or other law enforcement, or if no one was um, notified. Then if you have any evidence such as text messages, screenshots from Instagram, Facebook, whatever the case may be, you can attach those and upload those here. Down here at the bottom, when you hit that submit button, that will email it directly to me. No one else will see it. I will get the information and um, um, I will get that information from whatever you submitted. And then if you put your information in there, then I can reach out to you and get more information and dig into it and start a preliminary investigation. Now, if you submit an anonymous report, it kind of makes it hard for me to do a preliminary investigation and to look into it. Um, so, but you have the option of submitting it either um, anonymous or providing your information. Under this program, Everything is confidential, so it stays between me and the reported party and those who have a need to know. Um, and that's pretty much it under Title IX. If you have any questions, um, my information again, if I go back here, is right here. Um, I'm located in the Planetarium Building 267, Room 230, and my phone number is 501-3028 and you do not need an appointment you can just walk in and see me at any time all right and let me stop this here all right thank you very much larry we appreciate it larry and i work uh together a lot and i'll explain why in a little bit um, <laughs> um i get along with larry campus police and all of that um and I, okay fine i'll explain it now so my other, so I said Larry has multiple hats, right? So I'm one of the, other, well, a lot of people on campus do, but I have multiple hats too. And so now you're seeing me as, yay, director of student life and activities. And yes. then the other hat, when I change it, is uh, the main conduct officer for the campus. So that's when students get in trouble and doing, you know, maybe do have some conduct that's not correct or maybe they're just having a situation and the faculty start getting worried about you or somebody else, then it's up to me to intervene and try to figure out what's going on uh, with the student and see if there's something that we can do to help. Um, and I also, uh, under that Title IX umbrella, then I also do Title IX investigations. So uh, when it comes to student situations. So that's, those are hats that I wear just like Larry, Coordinator of Title IX is only one of the many things that he does. Um, so, but before I tell you all more about me, I'm just going to leave that cliffhanger there. Um, I want to introduce you to Dr. Christy Shank. She is the Director of Disability Support Services. And just like Larry mentioned, she helps students get accommodations on campus. And uh, I'm going to ask her to step on in while I share her slide. Hi, Mariselli. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, as Mariselli said, my name is Dr. Christy Shank. I'm the Director of Disability Support Services. And what our office does is we help provide accommodations for students who have a disability. 
The main thing that you have to remember is at the college level, if you have a disability, we are not permitted to ask you if you have a disability. So that means that you will have to self identify to our office that you do have a disability. Um, if you do have a disability, you do have to provide documentation to us that supports uh, the need for accommodations. Um, for example, we would need medical documentation for your disability. The disability can be a medical condition, a mental health issue, a physical disability. It's a wide range of disabilities that we cover. Um, if you have a disability and you're not sure that it's covered, it would be best to reach out to us so we can talk to you individually to see if that's a, a disability that we can um, accommodate. The medical documentation that you need to submit to us needs to be recent preferably within the past three years, but we can accept documentation up to five years. Um, we would need to know what your disability is, how it was diagnosed, how it affects you in a learning environment, uh, any limitations that you may have, as well as what accommodations that you might need. Uh, the accommodations are dependent upon your specific disability. Uh, common accommodations that we do provide would be extended testing time, separate testing area, note-taking accommodation, sign language interpreting, uh, textbooks in alternative format. Again, it's just dependent upon what your disability is. Uh, accommodations can be requested at any time, but we do recommend that you come see us as soon as possible once you've completed registration because accommodations are not retroactive. So that means accommodations will start when you are approved for accommodations and we cannot backdate them. So it's important to come see us as soon as possible. Another thing to keep in mind is that accommodations do not roll over each semester. So you would have to set up accommodations with us each semester that you need them. And we do have coordinators that you would be assigned to if you do become one of our disability students. So you will have someone that will help you with that process one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, we also help with uh, pregnancy, as Larry Murphy mentioned, um, that's protected under Title IX. If you do have a pregnancy that you need assistance with, you will need to also self-identify your pregnancy to our office. We will need medical documentation from your medical provider so we can help cover absences or maternity leave. So, um, for example, if you're going to be out of school for uh, four to six weeks um, and you're in the middle of a semester, we will need that information from you so we can work with your instructors on getting your leave approved and allowing you time to complete your coursework once you're um, able to come back to school. Um, we also do academic advising for our students, so that's another benefit if you are one of our disability students. We can assist you with academic advising, um, and the coordinators can assist you with that. Um, I will type in our web page information as well as our contact information so you can reach out to us. Um, if there's any questions, uh, please feel free to come see us or type them in chat, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right, thank you, Dr. Shank. I did see a question here um, asking, will Social Security disability be accepted? If you have paperwork from Social Security, it might be something that we can accept. It just depends on how the documentation is worded because we need specific information for college level. So if you have that paperwork, it's best to bring that to us and let us look at it to make sure that that's the paperwork that we can accept and that your disability is covered under the Americans with Disability Act. Um, so again, just come see us individually and we can work with you because um, we need that information so we can answer those questions for you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Dr. Shank? Otherwise, cool. All right. So last little bit, guys, just last little bit. As I mentioned before, I am the director of student life and activities, and I'm also the conduct officer for the campus. And I just really, really quickly want to go over a few things with you. Um, so that you guys understand and uh, we want to make so that you are successful. First of all, kind of like what Dr. Shank mentioned, you have to advocate for yourself with instructors and others. This is something the faculty mentioned too, but um, it is especially important uh, that you talk, you have to talk about it. You have to let us know what's going on with you. If you don't tell us what's going on with you, we are not going to go after you trying to figure it out. Um, in high school, 
you know, usually the the, fact, the the teachers would go behind you. Hey, what's wrong? Are you okay? Whatever. Um, it doesn't mean that the faculty might not reach out to you and try to figure out what's going on, but you have to tell them what's going on. Um, if you don't tell them, they're not going to go out of their way to try to help you figure out how to make things successful. So please, please, please know that you have to self-advocate. Um, also, that also means that you can't really be having, um, <laughs> you really can't be having like, your mom calling in to the faculty or, or, or your, you know, your parents or your spouse or your best friend, unless it's an emergency that you're there just saying, Hey, he's got an emergency. He's in the hospital. I just want to let you know that's one thing, but Hey, so what can my husband or my wife do uh, to be able to be successful in school? That's not going to work. Um, it has to be. Uh, that you as a student are the one that you 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 talk and that we're going to communicate. We're going to communicate with you. Um, for dual, I know we have some dual credit students here, specifically dual credit parents. Here's the thing: we're going to treat your child, especially dual credit parents. We're going to treat your child just like every other student, and we're going to treat them like adults because this is an adult institution. Even if they're minors, we're going to treat them like adults. So we're the expectation is that if anything happens, we're going to talk to the student and the student has to behave like an adult. That means that they're going to they're going to be expected to do all their work that they have. If they have to advocate, they have to be the ones coming forward and saying, I need help. If there's a situation, we're not going to call you. We're going to call the student or we're going to write the student. Everything is going to be done through the student. And we're going to treat them just like everything else uh, or, or every other student. So please make sure that you know that and that you as a student, even if you're not a minor, know that we're going to treat you and expect from you what we would expect of any other adult. And one of the things that we do with everything that I've mentioned already is we follow FERPA and FERPA is a federal uh, law, very sim similar to HIPAA in the health world. FERPA is in the academic world, and that means that we cannot give out um, academic information, including conduct, um, to anybody without permission from the student and written permission from the student. So it's very important that you're aware that nobody will talk to uh, anyone other than the student regarding their grades, regarding their conduct or any issues that they may be having on campus. This was mentioned before, we'll say it again because it's that important. Syllabus, you need to read it, you need to follow it, you need to make sure you're aware of it, print it, have it available for you. Um, most instructors do not offer uh, makeup work or late or extra credit, and if they're going to do it, it's going to be on the syllabus, it's going to tell you exactly how you're going to get that. So make sure you read it, it's super important, um, and that's why we're repeating it over and over again, because a lot of the times the students are like, well, I didn't know, but it wasn't. And they'll, I'm telling you, the faculty already said it, but did you read your syllabus? Because it's in the syllabi. Okay. Um, attendance, missing class is if here it's, if you have physical classes, you have to go to the classes. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. And if you're working on an online class, they give you deadlines for a reason. Try to stick within your deadlines. You have to do the work. Um, so attendance in an online class, even if it's self paced is making sure that you're doing, you're logging in and doing the work. So whether you're in person or online, you have to constantly be doing what you're supposed to, which means logging in online, going to class if it's in person, and making sure that you're asking those questions as the class progresses. Um, integrity, man. So you can't really cheat on these classes. Faculty have this way, and I guess that's the other thing I should have asked. They actually, if you turn in something in writing, they have the ability to put it through the system and know if you're cheating. If you like copied and pasted from some random person's other work or like a magazine or a book, they're gonna figure it out. There, it there's these programs that tells them, yep, they copied, or yep, it, you know, they they bought the the assignment, or they had somebody else do the assignment for them. They can tell. So please make sure that you're honest and responsible with all of your work. Uh, 
everything that you're doing in school, the whole point of this is to make you successful, be able to be employable in the future. And if you don't have integrity, uh, you're not going to be employable. You're not, people are not going to trust you in the future. And so it's very important that you take this very seriously. Oh, civility. Okay. So you got to treat each other nicely, right? Everybody, we just have to be nice. You don't have to agree. You don't have to like how other people tell you. Uh, as a conduct officer, I will tell you, I am going to hold you to your actions and your reactions. Not what other people told you, not what other people did, not what other people said. It's about what you did and how you reacted to a situation. Um, if you do not act or react in an appropriate manner based on the situation, you're going to get in trouble. So please be careful that you're doing that. Um, it's very common nowadays to curse. I, I know that. But be in a collegiate environment, you should not be cursing. You should not be, you know, uh, being unprofessional in the way that you dress, in the way that you talk, in the way that you do things. Um, don't interrupt. If you have questions, definitely raise your hand and ask them, but make sure that you're doing it in a way that is considered respectful and toward, you know, making it something that you're going to be learning from it and other people can learn from you, not necessarily being combative about situations. That's the big difference. Um, call it, there's a lot of guidelines and procedures in the student code of conduct. Um, and they cover things like cheating, plagiarism, disruption in class. Um, if you fail a class, how, how, what you can do, make sure you read the student handbook. I'm going to, in the next slide, I'll show you, um, how you can, the link to the student handbook. It's online on the CTC website. You can just type student handbook and you're going to see in there is going to have all the expectations that we have for you as a student. Please read it. Please be um, aware of it because we're going to hold you to whatever that says. Title nine, I know Larry already mentioned it, um, but it's very important that you understand that this applies to all students and that we do not uh, tolerate any violations of title nine. And there's a lot of resources on campus. Um, Wow, there's a lot of resources. Start using them from day one. We have free tutoring, guys. And whether you're here in Texas or on, we have online free tutoring, you just need to schedule it. Um, if you have, for example, um, uh, a report that you wanted to, um, that you did and you want to make sure it's spelled correctly and your grammar is good, you know, you can actually submit that to the library and within 24 hours, usually, they'll turn it around and give you some feedback as to what you wrote and how you wrote it. And that is free. All of this is free. Um, we have a lot of those. I'll show you a few more resources in a minute, but please take advantage of all the resources that we have. Most of them are included with your tuition, um, all of them really. So please take advantage of them. They're here to make sure that you're successful. So here you have the links to the student handbook, um, also to the college catalog, which actually tells you like degree plans. What is the degree plan that you're in and what classes you require for that, among other uh, policies. If you have a complaint, we do have a student complaint form that you can uh, fill out and we will go ahead and address those. And uh, the sexual misconduct uh, form, which is the same one that Larry showed you a little while ago. So, some of these resources that we mentioned. So, student success and persistence in the academic studio, that's where they have that tutoring. It's free. Um, all you do have to do is sign up for it. Um, and it can be either here in person or virtual. We have career services. So if you're like, oh, I need a job. I don't know where to get a job. I don't know how to interview. I don't know how to be dressed appropriately for my job. I need help with my resume. You can make a, a, a you can make an appointment with career services and they'll help you do all of that. They also have an assessment where you can actually go in and it can help you figure out what your interests are and what potential careers you can uh, explore and look into that might be a good fit for you. And they'll actually sit down, have a talk with you and really go over that assessment with you and show you some of the options that you have available to you. 
Disability Support Services. We talked to Dr. Shank already, so you met her. Student Life and Activities, yay, that's me. Um, we have clubs and organizations on campus, which I highly encourage everybody to participate in. Even if you're far away, you can still participate with clubs. A lot of them still meet virtually after COVID. That was something that started. And if you're still interested in doing that, please contact them. Uh, we have activities uh, coming up uh, for students all the time. We have um, a student lounge here and a student government. Residence hall. We have a residence hall on campus. I don't know that a lot of you know it, even if you're far away, but if you need a place to live and go to school, we, we are an option out there for you. <clears throat> All you have to do is apply, uh, pay the deposit. Uh, there are a few other requirements, but for the most part, it's fairly simple and straightforward, and you can actually live on campus and then come to your classes. Um, there's no better commute than that, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, that also includes a meal plan during the week, so you will have food Monday through Fridays as long as you're staying in the residence hall. <coughs> Other resources, we have faculty member and academic department, as you saw. Um, they're willing to be here and help you. Campus police, you met Nicole, um, but one of the things is you can always go visit her, and if you're having issues and you need some help, she's willing to guide you to the right person. Same thing with police. They're here to be a support to you as well. Of course, they're going to enforce, you know, violations of law or things of that nature, but they can also, like they said, they'll help you if you have a flat tire. Um, if you're feeling like you need some assistance, they're here for you. So please make sure that you um, take the time to meet with them, make sure that they know who you are and, and you know, meet them. A uh, student and employee assistant program that is actually professional counseling service. We have uh, mental health counselors here on campus. I strongly urge everybody to go ahead and um, meet with them. Transitions from and managing your life can be very difficult, right? So um, it's really uh, helpful for you to be able to talk to somebody and say, hey, I'm here because I'm having a hard time, you know, managing like my personal life and and college and all of that. And they'll help you and be supportive of you. Um, they also have the option of in person and online. So those are two of the things. Uh, that's another option for you as a CTC student. You can go ahead and talk to them and get some relief of for stress and any situations that you may have. <laughs> library, I already mentioned a little bit. Library has a whole bunch of resources. If, for example, you are a student that has um, has to take the TSI and you want to practice a little bit, you can go to the library um, as, as soon as you do admissions and they will go ahead and give you access to the databases. You can go ahead and uh, practice that. There's a lot of databases that have to do um, with the major that you know what degree plan that you're in or that you're seeking. Uh, so if you they say, oh, you need to do a research project, just go to a librarian. They're like super into helping people too. Um, they're very eager to show you what they have. So please, please, please go check them out. Uh, tutoring resources, we said we have the in-person as well as the virtual version of it. You just have to make an appointment. Uh, to make so that we can make sure that we have a tutor available for you. If you're here and you want to just come up to the academic studio and just, you know, see if there's a tutor available, you can do that, but we just can't guarantee you a tutor if you just walk off uh, or walk in. But you can always just come on in, say hi. They have computers over there that you can do your homework in, or if you need a few pages, not okay, not like the whole ream, but if you just need a few pages. Print, uh, print out, or if you want to print out your syllabi, that is a great place to go and print out your syllabi and get it ready. Um, they will let you do that. They will let you print out your syllabi because that's how important it is to us. Even if it syllabi tend to be a little bit long, but they'll let you do that for all your classes. Um, we have student services. So that includes academic advising, financial aid, veteran services, help you register all of that. And then the gym, we have a gym. You're welcome to come check out your gym. You do need an ID to go in there to get your ID. You have to be a registered student and you have to go to our 
um, student services. No, not student services. Um, enrollment center. Uh, the building is called enrollment center. You go in there and say, hey, I just need my ID. They'll ask for your, you know, registration information. They'll, you can take a picture and you're good to go. But you will need that to access things like the gym, um, the student lounge, and the library if you want to check out books or anything like that. And we just have a lot of resources around campus. We have yes here for our CTC uh, resources within the campus and campuses for CTC students. But there's a lot of information about what's going on around campus and other ways for you to be um, assisted. So please, uh, you can also go up to the academic studio. Uh, you met Charlotte a little bit earlier. She's one of the individuals that maintains those resources. And if you need assistance, um, she is one of those. She is the point of contact. Also, if you're, uh, we didn't mention that before, but if you are a ward of the state or you've been homeless or, you know, just leaving um, uh, state, uh, oh, what is it called? If you um, were part of um, like McKinney Vento or anything where you were homeless or if you were a ward of the state, uh, she is actually a point of contact for you. She can help you, um, but you have to self advocate and let her know that you're here. So please make sure that you talk to her um, and let her know that you might need a little bit of assistance because um, you were awarded the state. There are some things that you might need assistance with and she'll go ahead and help you out and steer you in the right direction. That's all I have for now. Are there been any questions that uh, have come in. Um, for the ID, you have to be in person. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, we don't do it for if you're online. You, there's no virtual version of the ID. You actually do have to come to campus and uh, get your ID card. Uh, and that's like in Killeen, Texas, central campus. For those of you that are outside of Texas. Um, so, but if you're in Fort Cavazos and you're taking classes in Fort Cavazos and you want to pop in and get your ID, you can do that. That's for sure. Um, let's see. Anything else? Uh, and now is when you can bring out all the questions, guys. Um, I, that's all I have to present. Now it's time for you to just let us know with any questions that you might have had that we have not been able to address yet. Um, what if I can't afford my books for class start on the 12th? Bye bye. Yeah, um, there's a lot of, okay. So for those of you that have issues with, um, getting your, your books online, um, or books in general, you need to talk to your faculty member. Uh, sometimes if you tell them, they're going to give you some options because they know the books and the materials, right? So they, they can give you options based on what exactly it is that you need. Uh, sometimes they have the option of like the publishers will let them give access to you for like the first chapter or two. Um, and that might be enough just until you get your funding in or, or for you to be able to figure out how to do it or for you to get your next paycheck or whatever it is. So that's definitely an option. I would say totally talk to your faculty member about it because they sometimes, They'll be like, yeah, I got you. Just do this, this, and this until you got it. Um, we do have some other resources through our um, Eagle Aid. Um, let me get that for you. Our foundation, actually, um, there they do the scholarships, and that's oh, what happened here. Um, but they. Um, they can sometimes assist with certain things. And it, this is like an emergency fund that we have. Um, let me, I'm sorry. There, well, yeah, that's the application, but I need the foundation. There we go. Okay, so if you, let me, let me share this real quick. Okay. So, under about CTC, we have the foundation. 
where is it? CTC Foundation, okay? Um, they have scholarships, which I recommend that everybody applies for, and they have different dates um, that they're open, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll just open that really quick. Um, um. But, and here's the timelines of the process. Uh, these are the dates when more or less they're so December 1st is when they, uh, they, uh, opened next time. Um, and then the review and all of that, like it kills you all the times, but on top of that, for what you're talk, what we're talking about right now, <laughs> go back. They have the Eagle aid emergency fund. And so it tells you exactly what you need. This is if you're like stuck in an, and it's an emergency, um, this is an option for you to kind of help you um, be able to get some assistance. They're, um, they pay the vendor, they don't pay you. So if you have a situation where, um, and there, there are some things that you have to do, but let's say you have an issue paying a bill or something like that, they're gonna pay like your electric bill, they're not going to pay, give you the money to pay the electric bill. Um, so this is uh, something that we have. We also have the Eagle Nest Food Pantry. For those of you that maybe have a little bit of assistance, um, need a little bit of assistance with food, we do have a food pantry. You just have to contact them and uh, the foundation will go ahead and help you figure out. I think it's every Wednesday that they go over there and they'll let you know uh, so that you can get some assistance through the pantry as well. Um, so those are some options. I know that it's maybe not like exactly, exactly good fit, but maybe you can use a little bit of this and a little bit of that to help you figure out some things. Okay. Um, hello. Sorry. This is Natalie. Um, I was just asking you, um, a question. I would just want to know, um, how to apply for the, the emergency team because like, um, the emergency team for the money emergency team, if you don't know, if you cannot pay the full amount of tuition. Um, actually, I'm gonna, like on a tight on a type um tight and stuck of spot right now because actually I was supposed to live with a, a, a relative, but he will not let me in. He will not my he well that relative will not let me in because he have a lot of things going on, and I don't have okay. a living situ situation. So I already did sign for um the dorms and stuff. So it's just that the only thing I need, I just want, I'm kind of concerned like how I'm going to pay the rest of the tuition, the books, yeah. because I don't, I, but I know financially it's not going to cover it, the whole team. So, so definitely not. here's, here's what I want you to do. Um, is Charlotte still here? No, but um, I am, thing, I'm still okay. here. <laughs> okay. So um, I really want you to kind of reach out to uh, you and Charlotte talk um, because there might be some things that she might be able to assist you with um, and at least guide you through the process. That the conversation that you need to have is a way bigger one um, than just paying tuition from what it sounds like. So I, Charlotte, can you please... Uh, Kind of get together with Natalie and and see what it, what you can do to help her, please. Absolutely, I'll put my information in the chat, and you can um, contact me. Um, she can get in contact with me today. Okay, thank you. Charlotte. Stella, can I can can we mention our transportation assistance? Um, oh yes, lending. Yeah, it's really big, and we have a ton of we have a ton of students on this call that are in the nursing program. Um, that are if you are in a CTE program, which is career technical education. So that means you're not on an AA or an AS degree plan. So you're either in an AAS or you are in on a certificate plan, uh, certificate of completion. And a lot of our nursing programs fall under this. You qualify for some special funding that we have for um, textbook lending. Uh, we have, and it also includes instructional support, uh, child care assistance, um, as well as transportation assistance. Um, and I can send you the links for applying for all of those. Um, it's through our office and we will post that for you. The transportation assistance um, gives you uh, $50 a month to help defray some of your gas costs. If once you get to the point when you're in your culminating semester and you're in an internship, we will also pay 
um, money towards your uh, transportation towards your internship site. Um, for uh, textbooks, you do qualify for the, all the textbooks. And I know in nursing program particularly, they're very expensive and they're bundled. Um, and potentially this program will pay for all of those. We will also pay for some of your other instructional materials if you need those. One-time instructional materials, we won't buy them every semester though. So like, let's say you needed, um, a, you know, something like a lot of times it comes up in our culinary program. They may need a certain knife or something like that. We can only buy it one time for you. Um, um, so that's your textbook lending program that we we do offer for you. Um, and then we also uh, um, offer child care assistance as well if you are in a career technical field. So up to three children um, and we do offer um, assistance for um, that as well. And so I we will put the link for all of those programs. Um, and the person who you talk to is Morgan Powell. She is out today, but she will be back in the office on Monday. So we will also, I will also put her information in the chat as well, but I encourage all of you to reach out to her for assistance with those programs. Thank you. Yes, um, definitely want to make sure that you guys are aware that we have all of this. Um, and so if you qualify for any of these, that also can be um, a big relief to you. If you have to purchase, if you qualify, then we might be able to get to the books. Um, it depends on the on the field that you're in. Um, and I think this is the link that she was looking at or for. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything else? Uh, oh, uh, Maricely, did you did you put the link? Oh, or yes, okay. Is it too late to submit a FAFSA for the summer? Ooh. No. It, it's not too late. You just need to know for what what FAFSA you're submitting, because really. The 1st summer, half of the summer gets covered by 1 and so that's 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 kind of confusing, but no, it, it's never too late to submit a FAFSA, but just know that you're in that point where you're, you're kind of crossing 2 FAFSA worlds where yeah. you submit 1, but they need the other 1. So, you may be in a situation where you need to go ahead and submit 2 the the. The what are, what year? One for twenty twenty two and then twenty twenty three, and then the twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four. You have to right. have both. Um, so just make sure, and it they you may not get that money. That money it may take some time before you get it. Even if you apply for it, that's why it's a little sticky. Yes, you can apply, but if you qualify, you're not going to get the money necessarily. So that you can start next week, <laughs> it's going to be something that they might retroactively reimburse you. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's see. So here's a question for uh, uh, online classes. Uh, Amy wants to know. Uh, it was mentioned most online classes are taken on Blackboard, but what if they're not on Blackboard? And she's not referring to those classes not showing up today. But are all online classes on Blackboard? The what the the. The main ones that may not be on Blackboard are the, the ones that are like automotive or some of the career, um, like in the industrial technologies area. Some of them do use Blackboard and some of them don't. But for the most one, for the most part are the lab intensive ones. Uh, so uh, the, it's kind of like HVAC or automotive and stuff, those are the ones that are pretty much not on Blackboard, uh, um, not necessarily on Blackboard. Some of them actually still are within that area. Um, for the most part on around throughout CTC, yes, they are. They have a Blackboard component, at least, even if they're in person, they have a Blackboard component. Um, but the ones that sometimes don't are those that are very career and very hands on type classes because they have mod, they, they don't. They, you can move through them so quickly that it, it, it doesn't make sense to have a blackboard component. Yeah, but if you're talking about your core classes, your English, your governments, your histories, yes. Yes, they are exactly. all through black, Online classes through blackboard. Yes. So that's why we really want, we want to make sure that, and we asked Dr. Reese to come and kind of give you a little bit of a highlight and then that you go through and watch the really long video that um, she did with Bruce and I, because that really is going to answer a lot of the detailed questions that you have. And then if you still have questions after watching the video, of course, your faculty can help you. Um, but and the beauty the, of that video is you can stop and start it and review it as many times as you need to. Yeah, so. definitely. Uh, if you if people have to go, that's fine. Can I have 
Yeah, uh, if you're a high school student, as long as you're a CTC student, you can definitely come in and take tutoring here at CTC campus. Yes, yes please come. It's going to be for your CTC classes, but we totally want you to take tutoring. We want, like, I, I don't know, Julie would, yes, please. Yes, come we want you it. stopping by the academic studio, or if you're in the math, do the math express or the math labs. Um, anywhere where we offer tutoring, we want you to take advantage of the library and the paper reviews, all of those things. I don't care if you're online, if you're thousands of miles away, if you're local, um, there are ways that you can access free tutoring through us. Um, a good place to start is through the academic studio. We partner with all of our different part uh, tutoring entities um, and we'll help get you in the right location. The other thing that I want to mention is I know for a lot of new students, um, we, we, we've talked about don't cheat in your classes, don't plagiarize, um, and it's what we call scholarly writing. Um, you know, when you take a Blackboard class, you have to do scholarly posts from day one and you have to respond to your peers. You have to cite those. You have to cite everything. You can't just cite your opinion. You've got to go in and find a scholarly article using the library databases and you have to cite that and you have to know how to do all of that. If you are nervous about doing that, I also want you to know you can come to the academic studio and schedule a, a time with a tutor because we also do tutoring on scholarly writing and how to meet those um, expectations first off. Um, and so we have several tutors that specialize in that that can show you and kind of work you through, oh, this is the question that you're having to respond to. How might you respond to that in a scholarly fashion? And then how might you then state your opinion and respond to some of your peers and how to do that? So it's how to do that um, in, from an academic scholarly standpoint. So please reach out to the academic studio online or in person if you're struggling with that. Because like you said, that is something that will get you in trouble. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to tell you is absolutely do not use ever, ever, ever use Wikipedia as a site for any of your papers or anything that you do at CTC ever. If you want to read it real quick, just to get a sense of what it is, that's fine. Do not cite it. Do not use it. Do not plagiarize that site. Um, that is not considered a reputable site. So I had a question that's private it says, if I'm using TA and I got approved for FAFSA, how can I make sure that the cost of the class isn't taken out of my FAFSA? Okay, so you're going to have to talk to our business office. Um, they are the ones that process all payments. Um, even if financial aid, we have our old financial aid or VA or whatever. Um, the one that actually processes the money is our business office. So I am going to put a link in the chat um, for business office because you just need to have a, converse, uh, a conversation with them um, about what's going on so that they can process your payment the way that you need it to be paid or they can tell you how that works because um, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit more. Um, complex. I, I I don't have answers basically. Let's see. For textbook lending, yes. Uh let's we say we have a question, Maricelli, about a student asked if they were transferring and how how we support that. So this is what you need to do. You need to talk to our transfer counselor. We have actually advisor, sorry. A transfer advisor in the uh, academic advising area, like where um, Richard is at, Richard Lewis, who you met earlier, uh, they they have that. And what happens is that they can help you figure out based on where you want to go, what degree plan you're looking to seek, and what you want to do ultimately. They can help you kind of make that link. Um, but everybody, if you're thinking of going to like a bachelor's or a master's, I always. Think of it like, what's your goal? And then how do you work your way back? So if you want to go, for example, to Texas A&M down the road at Central Texas, uh, Texas A&M, Texas A&M, Central Texas, we have a lot of roadmaps already. We have already a lot of agreements with them that are very simple. So an academic advisor, a transfer counselor that we have, they can easily just tell you, yes, this is, this is how you're going to do it, blah, 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 blah. If you want to go to a bigger school, um, TSU, um, um, Texas A&M and College Station, um, UT, UTSA, anything like that. Um, 
they can look at what we have and what we offer compared to what they have and how that can work. And they can help guide you through the process uh, and making those contacts over at the school that you want to go to. So that way you can talk to them as well and make sure what you're doing here matches what you need, what they're going to need over there. And that way you're not wasting time. A lot of times if you contact at school directly and talk to an advisor there, they can tell you like, oh, well, I have options in math. They can tell you, well, we think you need to take this math versus this math uh, because math is one of those uh, classes that there's, if you're doing a degree plan, sometimes you can take either applied mathematics or um, college algebra. Like sometimes you can, you have that as an option. So they'll tell you, hey, take this one instead of this one. Or if you have some electives that are available, they might tell you, well, you know, since you have electives, you only need to take for the degree plan at CTC, you only need English composition one, but for us, you're going to need English composition two. So make sure that as your elective, you take English composition two. So that way you're taking advantage of the classes that you're taking here and making sure that they match what you're going to need in the future. I hope that's what you were talking about. The only other thing that I would add is if you are transferring, make sure you know the dates for your application and every all those dates that you have to meet with the other school that you're going to, because we can't make any, we don't have any say in that. So you need to make sure that you have filed your application. If there's any essays due, um, FAFSA, anything like that, you need to be you need to be aware of those dates and make sure you get all of that documentation into them. Yes. Um, the tutoring building, it is a Roy J. Smith building 220 in central campus. Um, we can probably, I'm putting find, it in. We can probably find a map also. And, um, it's really kind of easy to do. I think, um, let me go to the link and this is campus map. And then you can see where all our buildings are. Um, so that helps you a little bit, I hope. How do you get into e farms? Oh, Justin. So let me tell you what happens. Let's let's share our screen, shall we? Let's do that. Where there's a will, there's a way. And you're gonna try the wrong way if I don't tell you, I don't share you. Okay. So this is our central, our, our main page under student tools. It was eForms, right? If you go here to eForms, bam. So as a student, you're going to log in with your CTC ID, but it's going to be C and then you're going to have some numbers. I don't know what your numbers are. I'm not, I'm going to put some random one. And then you're going to put your password in. First time a user instructions are right here. It's going to tell you exactly how to make sure that you have the password. So that's, um, that's how you can recover it if you need to. Um, I, I don't recommend that you use this down here because, um, if you're not using the correct, a, a lot of people use the incorrect information down here. So, um, I recommend you stick to the one in the top. That's the best answer I can give you right now. Um, well, okay, Zamaria, what forms do you need that are not in e-forms? Um, is there a front office at the college? If so, is there a number or email? I I posted the uh, academic studio and asked them just to call the academic studio and we'll we'll direct them. Yeah. Um, Okay, health sciences, which phlebotomy, nursing, and all of that, they do have specific uniforms. I don't want you going off right now and buying anything because they have specific scrubs that they want you to wear. They have they want you to wear that. It's a whole thing. So what you need to do is they they have you have a point of contact. If you've already applied to the program, they have you have a point of contact. You're going to have an orientation specific to that program. And that's where they're going to tell you exactly what you need. 
it, yeah, each program has a different color scrub and a different way of doing things. Um, please, 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 you need to be very specific and talk to your program because the scrubs for phlebotomy may not be the same ones for RN, may not be the same ones for MLT. They all have a different color. And I, yes, they have to tell you exactly. Um, yes, they need to tell you exactly what you need and how to make it happen. Um, so, yes, you need that those details about the classwork and all of that. They create your classes for you. This is you do not even register yourself for phlebotomy. Um, once you're in the phlebotomy program, MLT program and like nursing programs, they will register you for the classes that have to do with those programs. So you do not do anything else. They do it for you and they tell you exactly what the schedule is going to be like. Uh, we're not going to be able to give you that. Um, so please contact the program directly. Um, yes, uh, I think I do believe all mental, all, um, uh, all health science students do need their ID because that goes, especially when you go to clinicals, they want you to have that together with the, uh, any badge or ID that they may give you at the site, um, because that is how they're going to, that's one of the ways that they verify that you're a CTC student. So you go to the enrollment center and I don't remember what the building number is for that. 209. Thank you. Yep. And that's building 209 and that's where you can get your ID and it will have a picture in it. I do think when you get your ID, you have to have a copy of your schedule because they, they want, they want to know you have a, you have to have, take your class schedule into them. So you can't just walk in. You do have to have a class schedule. <laughs> And I believe another form of ID also. Yes, yes, you do. I do not know when the health sciences they have orientations. Like I know I went to an AD and an LVN one already, but they have multiple ones across the year. You have to be admitted first before they let you go to one of these orientations. So if you have not been admitted to the program, um, you're you're not going to know that yet. So they will reach out and contact you based on your application materials and the communication. I mean, your contact information that you provided, they will use that information and they will let you know when those dates are, those times, locations and everything. So make sure you're watching for communication from your department for those, and here's those the, specifics. And here's the thing for most of those departments, not all of them, but most of them, most of the areas within the health sciences, um, you have prerequisites that you have to have completed before you're allowed into a program. Um, they may have some, a lot of them require like anatomy and physiology, pharmacology, and some basic classes like that, English composition. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them do. And then based on the grades that you had in those classes, together with any kind of testing, that may be required. Again, not all of them have this, but for example, for nursing, you might have to take the HESI um, and they pick from everybody that applies, they pick the best of the best. So uh, it is not like an automatic, I applied and I'm in. It is a competitive, these are very competitive programs. So you need to make sure that if you have prerequisites uh, that you need to complete before you can apply to the program, do your best. This is where I say quality over quantity. You want to make sure that you're not overdoing it. This is my little tip for those health science people. Anatomy and physiology takes a long time to study. It's not necessarily difficult, but you need to apply a lot of time because you have the class and then you have the lab. And the two things are not, they're not talking about the same thing at the same time. It's almost two classes in one. So. And the same thing happens with most of those sciences with labs. So don't think that you're going to walk in there to, oh, I got this, everything's good. I'm just going to kind of like what uh, Dr. Cruz Seeley mentioned. You need to make sure you allot plenty of time for those classes. They fill up very quickly because they have very limited seats due to their labs. You need to be, that's where you need to be 
like at midnight Sunday registering for those classes to try to get the class that you need and that you want. Um, <coughs> so just make sure that you talk to them, verify exactly what you need and what the requirements are that you apply and that you fill out the packet to the best of your ability that every, any prerequisites you have, you do your best because they are a competitive program. Um, incoming new college students that just recently graduated. Let me tell you something. College is very different from high school. And that is like the main thing I can tell you is don't expect that your teachers are going to be behind you, that you're going to require the same time amount of time to study that you did in high school. You're going to need more time. The requirements are stricter and the faculty is not as flexible as they are in high school. So make sure that you allot plenty of time to study and that things are going to be different. So just be prepared and have that mentality. Also, I've had people that uh, are out of high school and they had a job in high school um, and then they want to come to school here because, you know, it was easy in high school to have a job and study and have, you know, their life. Um, it's possible. I have seen it happen. But it is difficult Do not overburden yourself, especially the 1st semester until you figure out what college life is like. Then uh, you can make that decision if you want to take more classes or if you, you know, if you're going to take the full time job versus not like, you really need to find that balance between school work and your personal life. And that goes for everybody, but most of, you know, the, the ones I see mostly directly from high school. They're used to that high school mentality and how things work and here at the college is going to be very different. So please keep that in mind. Um, what else? Any other questions that we haven't addressed? Let me look. Um, anything else? All right, I don't see any other questions. Does anybody else see anything that we haven't addressed? Mayor Sully, can you remind them about um, Welcome Week and for the fall semester? That Because we, we hope they're all still, you know, that we want them to be here for the Welcome Week and participate in our Welcome Week programs and activities. Yes, so, well, I'm going to start with Open House. Yes, thank first. you. Thank you, Open House first, absolutely. Yes, so... Let me show again, share my screen because I love to share my screen. All right, so we have open house July 22nd from 9 to 1 p.m. And I know most of you are like, well, I start my classes next week. Like, why do I want to go to open house? Well, you can still go to the open house for multiple reasons. One, um, you're going to have every single academic department and every single support department available to you in one building. So if you have questions about anything, that's the place to go. Um, July 22nd, from between 9 and 1, we're everybody's going to be there to answer questions. So this is a great time for you, especially if you already started your class and you're like, wait, I have questions now. Because now you might not have questions, but once you start your classes, then you're like, wait, I should do things differently, or I should do things better, or I need to figure out how to make this different. This is one of the ways that you can do it. Also, if you have any family or friends or anybody that might be interested or even considering coming to CTC, please have them come. That way they can get more information. Uh, we're actually going to be giving out two scholarships um, for the individuals that uh, register and show up to the event. Yes, <laughs> that is free money that you can actually use directly in the fall. And we're going to have uh, success stories. We're going to have um, the chancellor. You're going to have uh, quite a few deans speaking, not just Dean uh, Starkey, but other deans that are available, admissions, academic advising, financial aid, veteran benefits. We're going to have some tours. The Mayborn Science Theater is going to have some shows that day. You can actually walk. We'll give you a small tour of the campus if you need it. And then the scholarship guys, and then we have snacks because who doesn't love snacks? And then now we're working on potentially also having a fashion show 
that's going to show off some of the work that some of the students are going to be doing over the summer. Um, so please invite anyone that might be interested or even thinking about anything. It could be continuing education. It could be your kids. It could be your sister, your brother, your friend's brother or sister. Bring them all. Like, just bring them. Just come check it out. And then you can register online. So hopefully you can get a free t-shirt too. Now, um, welcome weeks. So during the beginning of classes, the first two weeks, we have activities to welcome all of our students here in our central campus and virtually as well. Uh, so some of the things that we're working on right now um, include, we're gonna have a talent show here on campus. Uh, we usually also, um, oh gosh, we have the library actually puts on a whole bunch of activities, whether it be the gaming tournaments, they do a lot of virtual games usually as well. Um, and a lot of things that, you know, you can just use it to meet other people. Um, it kind of ends on the second Thursday, which I believe is August 31st. Um, we're going to have our welcome bash. And this is going to be where, again, we have a lot of resources available. Um, a lot of the departments will be there to help you. So if you're like stuck or if you're not sure, or if you have questions, um, that's another place that you can go to. We're going to have a DJ with some music, a few snacks. And so we definitely want you to come along. Um, if you have questions about like, oh, I don't know where my classes are located. Um, we're going to usually the first few days of class, we have multiple locations that have maps. We'll help you figure out where you can go to um, figure out your classes. And that happens also next week. Um, like the student lounge, we'll have some maps, usually academic studio and a few other places around campus. We have, we always have maps and we'll help you figure out like, oh, where's your class or where do you need to go? Stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> if you are an English learner. And okay. So if you're an English learner, accommodations is not the word that we're going to use for you. Um, uh, we don't give you accommodations as an, uh, per se as an English learner. Accommodations we do for individuals that have a, dis uh, a disability that has been verified by a medical health individual or a medical health provider. Um, However, we do have English classes that you can take to get you to the point where you're going to be a good proficient English speaking and writing person. So we have the reading writing components as well as speaking. Um, and usually you can you take a test. Um, and I am going to probably say you need to talk to an academic advisor about that and they can help you figure out how you can test into a class that can help you become a more proficient English stu uh, a student that's more proficient in English and they can help you then hopefully get you to the point where then you can take your college classes and you'll be um, able to be successful then with them. So I would say contact academic advising. Uh, if you need help getting around camp, how would housing work on campus? Okay, um, housing, we have a residence hall here on campus. We have both single um, rooms and we also have shared rooms and we have suites that you can also share. Um, it depends on what you're willing to pay, but basically depending there's there's price differences depending on the type of room that you have. What you do is you contact our residence hall manager. Um, she's here, I think somewhere. I don't know if she's still actually actively listening, but Aubrey, are you there? I see you. She, but... she, she put her contact information in the in the chat. There she is. So you can actually reach out to her and she can give you like specifics based on what availability and what are some of the things that you need to do? Because there's some requirements to be able to 
live in the residence hall and she can give you the details. Um, well, thank you, Amber. I'm glad you had a good time. Um, any other questions? Anything else? The one thing I'd like to just kind of chime in there for those of you who have came in late, missed some of this or need to review any of this. This uh, session will be available on our CTC YouTube channel. Uh, probably tomorrow, the person that does the conversion from here to YouTube is out today. And so hopefully we'll be able to get that uh, done uh, tomorrow. So you can find it on YouTube and review any part of this that you need. Uh, Monday. To, yeah, to get any information that you might uh, need uh, to review or or that you may have missed. So we will have another option for you there. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any other questions, guys? Feeling good? Does it make sense? Do you feel ready? Are you ready? No. All right, I got thumbs up. Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys. Um, it has been a pleasure on my part being here today. This is, yes, I'm getting thumbs up. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I it, It's always fun. I love doing this. I love talking with you guys. This is the most fun that I have. You're welcome to come in. Uh, if you ever have any questions, come talk to me in the student lounge. Um, you are, you know, you could just walk in and say, hey, is she available? I do have meetings and stuff every once in a while, and I do take time off. But if I'm available, I am always uh, happy to just say hi. I always have people when the semester starts, it's like, hey, you're that lady from the orientation, right? I'm like, yes, that's me. Um, so uh, please, please, please look forward for next, you know, Monday. Hopefully you're looking forward to it as well. We'll be seeing you around. Hopefully you'll also come and visit all of our areas, check out what we have and uh, be successful and then if you feel stuck at any time come talk to us you know that's what we're here for and that's all i have for today thank you everybody yay we did it we survived and we left we're done by noon guys look at that see um we've gotten a couple questions i just want to say if you do want to go to an in-person new student orientation we are hosting that one on august 17th we've got a couple of other uh, virtual ones scheduled before then, um, but if you are specifically looking for an in person, it's August 17th, 9 a.m. in the Anders Anderson Campus Center, um, and we'll be sending out information about that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we're going to have a, a shorter, more condensed version of this on June 15th, a virtual info session for like an hour. So after you've had time to digest your classes and see how CTC is working for you. If you have questions that you need answers to, tune into that virtual info session. It'll start at 1.30 in the afternoon and we'll post the uh, the link and uh, sign up link like we did for this uh, online. And so you can jump in and ask any questions or kind of relay how things are working for you after your first few days of classes. So that would be uh, good to know. So. Um, English composition. I know that there's a lot of uh, classes now that, okay. So there's only so many versions of, you know, English composition, especially not to, the, the information doesn't change that much, right? From year to year. So the faculty um, has actually come up with a way where if it's something like that, where their, the information really doesn't change and there's a source that's free for the students, they will actually then give that you access to that free virtual source. And that way you don't have to pay for a book. Um, they may just say, okay, well, read this and this has information that you have, or this book, if you go to this website is free and you can access it and we're gonna use that as a materials for school. So I believe that's why there's no book for English composition, um, especially it's, English. It's yeah, it's what we call open educational uh, materials. And so your syllabus will tell you, if you have access to that, and many of our classes do not have <clears throat> textbooks that you have to purchase, that will be include that will be noted in your syllabus. Um, um, and so you do not want to buy a book if you don't need it. Um, and all of that is um, open open records, and the, your faculty provide you the links for that. And I in English Comp is typically one of those that does that. Yeah, there's only so many versions of Beowulf that you can read, you know. If you don't know Beowulf, that's okay. But 
you'll find it out. But the story is the story is the story, right? Um, let's see. Lab classes available for out of state or even out of the country. Well, lab. It's hard to have a lab like a science lab, for example, um, those we don't really offer online. There are some classes that do have a lab, a virtual lab component to it, um, but we call it a lab and you still might have to do some work and stuff, but it's not really like science lab. If, and then like, cause there's certain things that the teacher or the professor has to be able to see you do to be able to give you credit. So mm, um, there are some, but not many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, distance learners, you can buy your order your books online and get them. So that's not a problem. <coughs> All distance uh, learners, you can mail your books, get your books mailed to you. So, I mean, if it's free, then we like free, right? But um, if you do need something that has to be physically available, you can get that mailed to you. Just make sure that you order it with plenty of time in advance. There was a question about uh, labs for uh, out of state. Are yeah, we no. No, okay. We already answered that then. Never mm -hmm. mind. <laughs> if your books are no longer at the bookstore, you need to contact your faculty member because sometimes the books get out of print or something happens to it. We, we had, ooh. There was a moment in time where every single book, for some reason, the bookstore couldn't have, and it had nothing to do with them ordering. It was just a printing issue um, from the actual companies, right? Um, so talk to your faculty, because if you do require a book, they can sometimes give you access to a chapter or two until the book can come in. And they can, if not, they can give you, they can verify with the bookstores if they have it or not. And they can come up with solutions if it's not available in our bookstore. Yeah, you do also know a copy in the you, library. Yeah, check the library. I was going to say, but also know that if if you're, of course, if you're using financial aid to pay for your books, you do have to go through our bookstore. But if you're paying out of pocket, sometimes you do get a better deal um, looking at other other um, other book vendors, and you are you are fine to use a different book vendor. Uh, because you can get the name of the book and the edition and all of that in your course syllabus uh, or through the bookstore information, and you can look for it there and have it shipped to you or or, or what have you. The only thing I'm going to say to that is make sure that ISBN right. is the same one. And right. IBS, ISBN is the number um, in that barcode. You need to make sure that that's the same because we have had a lot of books that have been modified for CTC. And even though the, it could be the same book and the same edition, it may be missing chapters or something like that because our CTC faculty decided that they didn't need all those chapters, so they gave you a condensed version of it. Make sure that it's the correct ISBN. But that is provided in the syllabus. It's also provided, so you'll be able to access that number. But she's right. Do make sure you you use that number when you're when you're searching. If you're searching an online vendor or another uh, book book provider. Yep. Uh, what else, guys? Anything else? No. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, anybody else hungry? <laughs> it's lunchtime, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I am very, very happy. This has been super productive. Uh, we look forward to seeing you coming up. And, you know, again, if you just want to meet virtually like this, we could always have a meeting. I love a virtual meeting. I I, if I drag Bruce into virtual meetings um, I'm down. <laughs> all the time. You know, he came kicking and screaming, but he he... He's here now and he's become like this like virtual meeting guru with me. Yeah. So yes, if he can do it and I can do it, you can do it too. We can figure out a way at any time to help you out. That's what we're here for. So guys, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you around, whether it be in person or virtually. And you have a fabulous weekend. Get ready for your classes. Yay! And we're done. And thank you guys. Take care.